I'm sorry, y'all. I was uh, forwarding the <clears throat> forwarding the live. I can't ask y'all to do something I don't do. So I was forwarding the live. Hopefully, we're going to have a bunch of people on here tonight. Talk them out off whatever we're going to talk about and doing what we're going to do. Uh, hallelujah. Welcome to Coffee with Cleo. Whew. This is Coffee. I'm Cleo. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's good to have y'all tonight. We're going to wait and see a couple minutes, see whether anybody's going to come on. We might have some folks that's going to come in here with us. Oh, man, that's good. Yep, hallelujah. How you doing, Angela? Oh, man. We went to uh, Dee's aunt's house today. I had a friend of mine go buy me a tractor in the morning, a little tractor. Lord's blessing us with an opportunity. Uh, we're going to run over there and... Uh, and get it real quick. And uh, I think it's going to be a good deal. I, I know it's going to get a good deal. I know the man that owns the tractor. So, you know, he's not trying to sell junk. We're getting it at a good price. God's good to you. Listen, folks, I'm going to tell you right now. The title tonight is It's About God. Okay? And if we're, uh, we're going to be true and honest, we're going to be about God. And, uh, you know, back when... Uh, Jesus was a little buddy boy, and he went with his dad and mom to Jerusalem for the feast. What they did, they had to go to the to Jerusalem, basically checking in, hey, Lathus, and uh, and check in, by and large. And uh, they went, and when they're coming back in a caravan, the reason he went in the caravans was because the roads were dangerous. There wasn't any police, okay? You, you traveled in numbers because that's how you were defending yourself. They're three days travel out. And uh, look around, they can't find Jesus. Now, they, they, people are like, well, why would you think it was three days out? Because they were in a caravan, and the kids, you know, get lost in it and go back and forth and spending time with their buddies, and that's what kids do. And uh, so then uh, they went back to Jerusalem, which was dangerous for them, by the way. They were three days out. That means they, were, they got to travel those three days back to Jerusalem without a caravan. Hopefully they had a caravan there. Hello, SJ. <coughs> Hello, Kate. And uh, so um, they go back and they, they search around the city. They're looking for the kid. Can, I, you can imagine looking in a city for a kid. I mean, you know, it wasn't no better then than it is now. I mean, there were there were, there were people that would, you know, um, steal kids away then too. So, you know, you got to, got to, mom and dad had to have been scared. Hey, Tammy, thank you for the rose. And uh, so um, they find him there and said, oh, you know, what are you doing? Thank you, Brother Steve. And he said, you know, said, uh, what are you doing? He said, he said, didn't you know I'd be about my father's business? You know, didn't you know I'd be about my father's business, right? Why, why not? You know, what what do you expect him to do? be doing? And, and sometimes... Um, we need to make sure we're focusing whatever we're doing. We had some guys come to survey the property today. They come in, and uh, um, both of them are, um, well, one of them is, is, I think they're both in reserve, or fixing to be in reserve. One of them's in reserve. He's fixing to deploy to Croatia and uh, in a couple months. And uh, I, I gave him prayer calls, you know, and told him, you know, listen, um, you know, big boy Steve. I got you, son. Don't worry. You're welcome. Um, you know, the the um, survey guys come in. I, I, I gave them prayer claws. And, you know, gave them one for them, one for their wife. And, and I told them, hey, Joe. I said, you know, I said, you got to understand. I said, we do understand is that the whole family deploys, you know. The family doesn't doesn't leave, but the whole family dynamic takes the hit when the husband and or wife moves and goes for a year or three months or whatever, however long it is. You know that that family has to to still function without the presence of you know whatever whatever entity in there. And so I gave them prayer calls and asked them if they would mind you know telling their friends and brothers in the service that. Uh, all they gotta do is ask, you know. Uh, all you have to do is ask us, you know. Anything Coffee with Clay Ministries, you can. You know, Coffee with Clay is an entity. I am Coffee with Clay. Um, 
I have Linktree. I'm a public page, public figure. And uh, part of what we do at Coffee with Cleo is we fund the prayer cloth ministry. This is a prayer cloth. It's just a little strip of paper, or paper, a little strip of cloth. We take a drop. I don't have my oil out here with me. We take a drop of oil and we put on there. My wife and I pray over it and we mail it to people. We mail it to people anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the world. We don't care. If we can get a mailing address, we will mail a prayer cloth. We don't ask for anything, nothing at all, period. There's not an invoice in there. There's not a you can help buy nothing. It's just that. And uh, those guys were like, wow, this is, you know, that's what we're not used to. You know, and they're, they're, they're surveying right now, but they were both military and they're like, you know, that's, it always comes usually with a hook in it somewhere. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get anything from you. I'm trying to give something to you. It's about God. It's about unity and perseverance. So a person, you know, and I told him, I said, you know, if you got a friend that wants a prayer call, don't want one. I will mail them one, and I will enclose a note that my wife wrote. And uh, I didn't tell them what the note said, but here's what the note says. If if a person wants another person to send a, a prayer cloth, it probably wouldn't know what one is, because everybody don't. Um, it says, enclosed you'll find a prayer cloth. God's word tells us to anoint and pray for the sick, James 5 and 14. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And in Acts 19, 11 and 12, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that when the handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick, their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Because of the times, it's not always possible to get to the elders or the elders to get to you. So we have anointed this piece of cloth with anointing oil, and have prayed you and your, your need, whatever it may be. We also write your name in a notebook, and we pray over the notebook every morning and night. It's our hope that you place the anointed cloth somewhere in your Bible, wallet, fridge, that when you see it, it is a reminder that God is with you, and that you are loved and are, are being prayed for daily in the mighty name of Jesus. And so... That's why if you want a prayer cloth, all you have to do is message me and ask for one, or you can send it to email. This is my email right here, R-C-E-S-K-E-W. Take a screenshot while it's up there, and you can send me an email. Some people are like, I just don't want to put my address on the on the web, and I'm like, you're not going to hurt my feelings at all. I understand. Whatever, whatever, however you feel, that that's fine, okay? So... You know, ask for a prayer cloth. We want to send them to you. We don't want anything for them. We just want you to have one. We want to build a, a worldwide web of prayer warriors. It's about God. Okay? It's not about me. And it's not about you. It's about God and the next soul that we're going to be able to expose to God's truth. Hallelujah. It's about God. All things work together to good. Them that love the Lord, them that are called according to his purpose. It's about God. What, 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 whatsoever you say or do, do in the name of Jesus. It's about God. Continually focusing ourselves on being a better Christian will help us in every area of our life because we'll, we'll, we'll learn to persevere. We'll learn to understand when another person's talking. Sometimes it's not that they want you to fix whatever it is. Sometimes they just want you to listen. Okay. They just want you to hear a little bit. Amen, Joe. You know, they just want you to listen sometimes. Um, my wife and I, sometimes um, she's over there the other day and, and she was, she was, you know, talking about seven and, and, uh, and uh, me and her fixer. So I was like, well, here's what you need to do. And she said, listen, I'm venting. I just need to vent. I said, okay, well, okay. So I'm sitting there and, you know, and, and because she's told me she's venting, I know she needs to talk. I need to hear it, but I don't necessarily need to engage in it. So if I, if I attend too closely, I'm going to pop up and give her an answer or something. And she didn't want that. So I'm sitting there trying to mind my own business and letting her, letting her talk. And then she pops in with a, what do you think of that? And I'm busted because I wasn't listening, you know, and I was like, well, 
I wasn't listening. And she said, well, why weren't you listening? I said, you told me you were wanting to vent. I said, it, you know, um, when you want to vent, you don't necessarily want to re want to have anybody reciprocating with you. You just want to have your your moment in there, and you, you know. And she's like, okay, well, you know. Anyway, um, you know, uh, communication matters, and uh, often enough times, interpersonal relationships and things like that. You know, if you're going to have a strong, healthy marriage or a strong, healthy relationship for any amount of time, number one, you're going to rough one another's feathers from time to time. And, uh, you know, um, and, and, and sometimes you're not going to understand. One of the things that I found effective, I, I do this when I'm counseling uh, specifically, is like if we're sitting across the table and you're talking to a person and, and, and they're, 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 they're telling you what they're, their spouse, okay? Because invariably, you know, you're going to hear, my wife just don't understand me. Or you're going to hear, my husband don't listen to me. My, you know, hello, Finn. You know, my, 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 my spouse don't listen, don't interact, don't do it right. Well, then you're talking to the other side of it, of the equation. And th they're telling you, listen, uh, she's talking about something before she gets my attention. Okay? Now, my wife knows. Okay, if you want me to listen to you, the first thing you do is get my attention because uh, a dual-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So, if you just if you just start rattling and you don't have my attention, the chances are you're not going to catch it. Right? It's not just going to spring in. I, you know, I, I respond to my name. Okay, and so boom, you know, Clell, listen to this. Okay, now you got my attention. Start. Okay, anything that came before that don't count. Uh, so I have this couple, right? And it's what I'm saying, Kate, exactly. You, you get his attention first and now we're talking, now we're communicating. So this, this couple, they were, they were, they'd been married for nine, 10 years. Okay. And got the little bambitos on the floor and, and, you know, the husband's complaint is, you know, that, uh, you know, the, the house isn't as clean as it was. The husband's is, uh. So sorry, Brother Ricky. So very sorry to my son, Anthony Johnson, who's killed. So sorry, Ricky. So very sorry. So very sorry. There's, there, 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 there ain't no words that you can tell a man or a woman, a parent. There, there is nothing. And the, the hurt don't go away. Um, yeah. Take care, Rock. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, anybody that knows me knows I don't ask for money, but people ask me to put the cash app up there. That's what I did. And, uh, they told me to put the, the Amazon thing up there. That's what I did. I don't ask for nothing. Here's what I do ask for. I ask for everybody to consider Jesus in all things. So anyways, I'm talking to these. So thank you, SJ. So I'm talking to these, this young couple. They've been married. I don't know what's this, nine or 10 years. It was at that, that median time, you know. And uh, you know, got a couple of kids, and the house isn't as clean as it used to be. He's not as attentive as as you know as as he used to be. He never brings me flowers. Well, she never, you know, and and <clears throat> and it boils down to, um, you know, intimacy issues, etc. And so I got them both sitting in there, and uh, and 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 I, I'm like, oh, can you listen now? Tell him, tell him, tell him what you need to tell him. Yeah, Joe, you can ask a question. And and so he tells her what what he said, you know, what 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 he thinks the issue is, right? And I said, okay, now you tell him what the issue is, and he tells him, and you tell us a little bit of ruffle coming up. And I said, uh, now now here's what I want you to do, okay? So you remember what you asked her, right? And we you told her, yeah. I said, now what I want you to do is I want you to tell her, look across the table at her and tell her, what did you hear me say? And he looked at me sort of like, you know, like I had three eyeballs. And, uh, and I said, and, and he, he says, okay, so what did you hear me say? And what she heard had nothing to do with what he said. Okay. And it went out something like this. Okay. You know, he's like, you know, uh, the even, Hey, Sarah Lou, the, the house doesn't stay as clean as it did when we were, when we were first married. Right. And she heard you're not having intimate relationships nearly enough, 
right? And so I said, the table that, right? And you tell, tell him what you said. You don't pay nearly enough attention to me anymore, okay? And I said, now, what did you hear her say? He said, I don't buy her enough stuff. I said, now, is that, you know, and I, I look, is that what you hear? Um, no, you can wax it, Joe, but I'm sorry, man. You're going to chew some hair every once in a while. <laughs> That's how it goes. I've, I've actually, I've actually pulled my lip hairs. <laughs> like, oh God. If you get anything gummy, you're in trouble. Um, so, you know, um, that, that's how it goes. You know, if you get stuff stuck in it. But the point was that what you're saying, you want to make sure that what you're saying, hey, Larry, what you're saying is what they're hearing because communication is only effective when the message is delivered and understood. And so I, I was working with him and this guy, you know, later on, he, 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 did, he done really good because when he realized, when, when he realized on his part, when he realized that his message wasn't coming across, he meant he, he he actively sought to make the message clear without being ugly. Okay. And folks, y'all know as well as I do, you know, um, people get embarrassed, you know, well, didn't you hear what I said? Well, you know, I heard the words you said, but I also heard the message you conveyed and you, you want to have what's called a congruent message. You want to, you want to say what you say, and, and mean what you say, all right? The congruency in a message is you're telling a person, say, yes, I believe that, okay? Or, no, I don't think we're going to do that, okay? You, you're, you're incongruent. Your you're, you're nonverbal is not lining up with your verbal, and therefore, what the message is mixed message received, okay? So <clears throat> the tone of your voice tells a message, it, it, inflection, uh, how you say something, um, I walk in there and I see my, my, my wife and she's put on a nice, a nice dress and we're going to go out. All right. You can say the same words and, and what you emphasize and inflect matters. Okay. I go in there and I say, wow, honey, you look, that, that dress looks nice on you. Okay. Nice message. Right. But you can take and, and, and emphasize a given word in that sentence, you know, and it, it means something different. Hey, honey, that work, that suit looks nice on you. Hey, honey, that dress, that dress looks nice on you, making it that particular dress. The point is that when we are, when, we, when we're getting ready to convey a message, we need to think not just how we're going to say the message, but you have to remember if you, especially when you've had long-term dealing with, you know, husbands and wives kind of stuff and, and mothers and fathers and children, is how they're going to receive it. So you have to shape it so that it is acceptable to them, okay? So that it's understood by them. You can't go in there and, and you know, start algebraic equations with a, with a four-year-old, okay? I, I know there's a rare one out there somewhere, but, um, oh, yeah. If you're going to text message, <clears throat> I, 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 tell my, I tell my wife, I tell my kids, if you have something important, don't text me, Okay? Because the written word, the written word will be will be rolled up and beat you over the head with. Okay, well you texted me. You know, um, I, I remember I, when I first started texting. You know, um, I, I did all caps. You know, because it was easier to read for me. And uh, a friend of me, she's like, "Why are you mad?" She calls my wife. You know, oh, what's Cloud mad about? And you know, it's like. I ain't mad about nothing. He, he sent me a text in all caps. That means you're mad. And I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know, right? And I'm not real sure that our friend ever got over that. You know, so, I still don't know to this day what, what it was that he was mad about. You're shouting. Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, you know, um, when I went to Germany, I learned to speak German. I was smart enough to know that the first words they ever teach you will be the nasty, filthy words. So, you know, and I was, gee, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to not learn those words specifically, but I was trying to learn how to speak. And so, uh, you know, I went over there and, 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 and I made them teach me something, something better. You know, I learned from people that, that had more than just laughing at me when I said something, you know? Um, and so, 
when we're when when we're trying to communicate, we have to think through the message, and also, you know, every everybody's done this. You've had a conversation in your head, okay? You've had a conversation in your head. I, this 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 one woman told me about. She had a dream about her husband, and he had done something to her, and she woke up and stayed mad at him for three days over something he did in her dream. And I was like, that's kind of unfair, don't you think? And she said, but I was so mad. I said, yeah, but when you woke up, you should have said, you know, um, that was a dream. My husband's over there, didn't do it. Okay. And, uh, you know, but, and uh, I'll buy it. This is a, a person that's, you know, she's not the sharpest knife in the door. She's not dumb. Okay. But she's, just, she's not culture, maybe is the word we might look for. Okay, maybe a couple of hours, but go ahead and get over it because you know <clears throat> when you have the, <laughs> when you have the 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 dreams or you have these conversations in your head, okay, and and I know her still, and she's bad to do that. Um, <laughs> okay, and and you have an, you have a conversation in your head. And you're already fired up. You're ready for every response they can give. And nine times out of nine, they're going to say something that just throws your game off. You're like, wow, what, huh? Okay, even if you're thinking it's going to turn out to be great. Okay, it's going to, it's going to be a discussion. We're going to fall in. We're going to fold into this beautiful discussion. It's going to turn out. It's going to be like, you know, it's going to be like unicorns and rainbows and, and flowers all over the room. And and it goes just the absolute opposite. And the next thing you know, you you know, you you you're just throwing insults across the room or something like that. And you hope, how did we get here? This wasn't where I wanted to go, but that's what I'm saying. When you formulate the discussion in your head. Okay. And then you get ready to introduce the conversation. Just remember blank. That's that slate over there. That's what I thought, but this is what's really going to happen. I'm going to say, um, Hey honey, uh, we need to go to the grocery store. And all of a sudden it's the car, uh, the, the, the car is breaking down. I, uh, John at work is messing with me and making me mad. I mean, you're like, wow, all these variables get thrown in because you see the conversation in my head, it only involved me and you talking across the table and you have all these variables thrown in here. You're just wrecking my conversation and you have to slow it down. You have to pull it back and you go, okay, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Maybe we need to have a little talk before we have this talk. Let's let's go ahead and have the the how you doing talk. Let's go ahead and have the what's on your mind talk. Let's go ahead and have the hey, listen, I'm here for you. Remember, I'm the person on your side. And sometimes you really do have to do that. You have to slow them down, pull them back, pull the, you know. Do you know how you how do you, how do you how do you kill a fire? The best way to kill a fire is just pull the logs out of it. Okay, just pull the logs back off it. Turn turn the fuel down, and 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 it'll it it's gone. So you do that, you pull it back, you go, hey, look, no, uh, we're not having it. And the next thing you know, you're going to be sitting there going, wow, look, we used to have a fire, now it's gone. Best thing you can do is pull the fuel back, okay? When Learn your your spouse's triggers. Learn, learn the code words, okay? Um, learn the different... Um, Everybody's a work in progress there. <laughs> Anybody gets perfected, then it gets taken out, you know. But the 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 real deal, the way that it really works, is that we always, okay, are still trying to figure out the person sitting across the table from us. One of the one of the biggest tricks in life, okay. Um, like I said, I did premarital marriage counseling, and. Uh, you're talking to these young guys and they're, they're over here and they're talking about, you know, Oh my goodness, man said, uh, she's the perfect woman for me. Right. I can't wait for la 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 la, la you know, all this. Right. And then you got the woman and she's over there and she's talking about the man he's going to become. All right. And, and you're like, listen, one of the tricks that marriage plays on us is men get married Okay, or excuse me, women marry men thinking he'll change, and he don't. Women, or men marry women thinking she won't change, and she does. She's going to. Women are dynamic, 
in 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 their in their their life encounter and stuff they're ever ever becoming okay so she was a girl she became a woman you married her she became a wife later on she became a mother and the mother she became an aunt she became this she became church she, you you're still Joe Smo the carpenter over here okay and 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 your men basically calculate their 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 stuff. I'm the same guy doing a different job, but it's not the same woman doing the same thing. She's she's evolving into this this person that she's going to be one day down the road. She's going to be this matriarch and matriarchal person. And and the first child a woman raises is her husband. Okay, I, I'm telling you right now, I, nobody fools on. Um, it, it does, Larry. It does. Uh, there, there are men that are exceptions to the rule, but by and large, um, men don't, number one, men don't grow up until they're 30. If they're going to grow up, they won't do it before they're 30 years old. It is a rare man. And you shift the world on his, on, on a, on a 12 year old boy's shoulders and he'll be a man there. Okay. He will, I've seen it. I've seen, I've seen 12 year old men. I've also seen 70 year old boys. Okay. They said that if you don't grow up by the time you're 50, you don't have to. So I'm, I'm free and clear on this. Um, but the, the whole thing is, is dynamic shapes people. And we've got that. Okay. But the first, by and large, the first child that the woman is going to raise is going to be her husband. She's going to have to, to shape him to be, and, and, and it's going to be, it's, it's, it's not easy because we don't want to change. We like who we are, you know? It's, it's, a, it's a joke, and I tell it often, okay? But, you know, you say, you say men like who they are. Women don't, okay? Um, that, and it's not that they don't like who they are, but they per, it's, it's self-perception. They always perceive themselves moving forward. A guy, like I said, a guy's, you know, here I am. I can go do all these different things. We compartmentalize, okay? If you, if you take your son, for instance, you take your son and you take your daughter, and and both of them go at school and they get in trouble, okay? They go to school and they get in trouble. And the son comes home and you tell him, because you were bad at school, you can't go to baseball practice. He has no idea what you're doing. Uh, the girl comes in from, from school. She was bad at school. He said, well, because you were bad in school, you cannot have piano lessons today. And she's like, oh, man. I'm going to have to get better at school. I'm going to have to remember to be better at school so that I can have my piano. She link them together, put a boom, right? Men are compartmentalized. He looks and he says, I don't know why they're being so mean to me. You know, well, you were bad at school. Yeah, but that was school. Punish me in something that has to do with where I committed my transgression. I understand that. I perfectly understood. And back in my day, if you got in trouble at school, they principal or a teacher, nine times out of 10 teachers, they pull a paddle out, pow, okay? You straighten right up. You realize and understood that, you know, okay, I was bad here. I got straightened out here. And the rest of the day, you might be joking with the same teacher in a few minutes. You know, it's funny as I'll get out. Because, I mean, you know, I mean, come on, he didn't kill you or nothing. He popped you on the rear end. Okay, I didn't like it. You know, I wasn't running nowhere trying to get on the other side of the desk and get my buddies over there. And, you know, hey, he's going to get a whooping too. Can I get it? I wouldn't do that. But, it was corporal punishment. It was designed to inflict a little bit of pain, but cause you to focus your, your activities. So women and men differ in how we think, okay? And how we go about things and how we progress in life, okay? Um, by and large, far too many of our young people don't have a goal. They have no goal at all. It's, you know... Um, I had a, a girl that, that was in my Sunday school class, and bless her heart, she was just as sweet as she could be, okay? And I, I, I was asking them about goals because one of the things that I tried to teach, I tried to teach the whole person concept in my, in my, my, my Sunday school students. And, and so, you know, I would, I would teach them about, you know, how to fill out a job application, how to, how to understand what a checkbook meant. How to, how, if you didn't work and you didn't put money in your checkbook, just because you had a check didn't mean you had money, okay? Things like that. And, you know, just general life. And so I was asking about goals. Goals matter. And and she was like, oh, um, I want to get married. And I was like, well, yeah, but you you want to, um, you know, you want to do anything with your life, which was uncommon. 
Okay, there, there ain't nothing wrong with being a housewife. It's a good job if you can get it. Okay, it's a it's one of the one of the most demanding, uh, least least uh, recognized jobs out there. Okay, and the pay stinks. All right, but you get to have your house. Well, you know, it's there ain't many of them left anymore. But anyways, that's what she did. She grew up. She got married. And I, I think she's had one, maybe two kids now. But, you know, that was it. And she stays home. Her husband works. She stays home. Hey, listen, if you've achieved your goal, but set another goal now. Okay? You know, what do you want for your kids? Set some goals for them. Set some. Don't live vicariously through your children's eyes. But be in tune enough with their, with their lives to motivate them. Okay? Who's having an MRI in the morning? Sarah. To her brain having an MRI in the morning? <clears throat> Anyways, that's that's a, that was what I was, uh, I just some general thoughts, some ramblings here. Okay. Well, let's pray for her. How about we pray for her just right now? We got live fight going over. We'll cover that too. Lord, in Jesus' name, we're praying for Sarah's friend, Lord. In Jesus' name, we're praying, God, she's having an MRI. Lord, let it be clear. Let her have the, the best possible answer, Lord, in Jesus' name. We ask this trusting and believing, Lord. We hear the life flight helicopter going over, God. Be with, with whoever is there, wherever it's going on. We know that when they're coming in, they're coming to get somebody up here, Lord. So give them a safe flight wherever they're going and positive results in all things. Lord, we thank you for this day and this opportunity for us to come together. Lord, you're the one true God and the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the King of Glory, the Mighty and Holy One, the Alpha and Omega. We thank you, Lord, that we have found a way to reach one another across this app, across these, the World Wide Web, to touch one another's lives, to lift one another up in Jesus' name, to hold your mighty hand, Lord, as we pray in subjection, but also, Lord, as children of the Most High God, crying, Abba, Father, in Jesus' name, heal. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Robin, touch Robin, Lord. I got a skeeter over here, y'all. One of the little teeny weeny skeeters. You know the ones that bite real hard? Ah, so, we've got the fast continues, y'all. Um, We've got the fast covered through Friday night. We need somebody to cover Saturday night. Um, D and I will be, um, we're going to be moving out. Uh, not moving out. We're, I'm going to be moving out in the morning. I'm going to look at that tractor and get it, Lord willing. And uh, it's, a, it's a little tractor. If it's what I, I don't, I don't have a big place, so I don't need a big tractor. Okay. But I do need a tractor. Um, well, thank you, Sarah Lou. Praise God. I just pencil you in. And that will cover us all the way until um, till next week when we start Sunday. We'll start again. Okay, awesome, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, wonderful. So, what are we doing with it? We're doing the the fast, and we're praying for unity. For anybody that don't know about the fast, hey, you listen. If anybody that doesn't know about the fast is that we are praying for unity in the body, that we can put our differences aside, okay, and come together in Christ Jesus. Unity in the body, okay? Well, I I was talking to my next-door neighbor, and he's, he goes to a different church than I go to, and, and I was telling him about this morning, just talking to him. I said, you know, I said, I said well, we, we, everybody is focused on pointing a finger at the other denomination over there and declaring as to how they're not going to be able to make it. Um no problem, Euless. It's on you, man. All is well. Um, you know, um, and so we have to come together in unity. And and understanding this, it's about God. When we unify in Jesus' name, when we come together in Jesus' name, God is among us. God is right here with us. God is working miracles through us. Okay, we are the children of the Most High God. We're not serving no second-rate Santa Claus, okay? We are serving Jesus Christ, the one true God, the everlasting Father. 
Okay, we are serving the God that actually is a God. People, I have so many times people have have been out there and they're like, "Well, how do you, how do you know?" And I'm like, "Listen, for the guy that comes on here every night and he goes, you know, it's all fairy tales and 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 mythology." And I'm like, "Listen, you got a right to believe that, okay? But here's the thing: you can believe anything you want to." But it won't get you to heaven, okay? And yeah, exactly. You know, and you you just you tell them about Jesus a little bit here and a little bit there, line upon line, precept upon precept. You introduce them, okay? We had uh, uh, some some families that was we we did a food drive ministry, and what we'd do is we would take and we would go. We we had people would tell us, hey, listen, you know, you got a mom with. Um, three kids, you know, and dad's a dirt bag. He's, he said, they need some food. And so we'd go over there and we would take a, um, we'd go over and we would take a box of groceries. Okay. Here. And this one family, they were, uh, I don't know what they were, but they didn't, they were kosher. And they were like, would it be okay if we looked on the labels and if it has pork, we've got to give it back to you. And they're, they're like, listen, we don't, we don't want to offend you or anything like that, but we, we don't eat pork. So if you leave that here, it's not going to get eaten. And we would rather it went to somebody and fed somebody that, that, that can and will eat it. I don't know. How do you, you don't get mad at them for that. Right. But you know, well, beggars can't be choosers. Well, yeah, yeah, you can. You can choose to, to, to be hungry. Okay. And um, so, in our time, in our this is this is our time that we're here, okay. But God is doing great things with you. You don't know it, okay. Never to need to leave. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. That's it. it I, I don't know what they what they do, um, but you watch these things, and you will see that people uh, they, they want something. If you go to an AA meeting, it'll be um, how does it say it? My higher my higher power, and I'm like, you know my higher power is God Almighty. There's a lot of powers that are higher than me. I'm, I'm not anything in particular. Okay. What are we? Nothing. Except as we are in God. Okay. So the authority, when I tell people, you know, about God, you know, the authority is in the word of God. So I was talking to this guy and, and he was, he said, uh, Got you, Euless. Got you, buddy. Um, so, anyways, the, um, the guy comes in. He's like, "Well, I don't believe the word of God." I said, "Well, then I don't have any authority to to, to tell you anything." And he goes, "So you're saying that there's no God?" And I said, "Ain't what I said." I said, "The only authority that a, that a man of God can have is the word of God." So if I'm going to have any authority, if, if you're going to reject, if you're going to reject God's word, then you've taken away any authority that I may have had because the, 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 the authority is to, to show you the word of God and allow the word of God to manifest in you. I'm not interested in leading a whole bunch of people around by nose rings. Okay, I'm not interested in running around behind people to see what they're doing and how they're living and how, what they're saying. And, and you shouldn't have said that and you shouldn't have done this. No, I pastored and I didn't do that. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of pastoring here and I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, we will, Lisa. I'm not going to get in the middle of your personal business to find out whether or not There's something for me to be dealing with because you know what? If you don't want me to know, I don't want to know. Okay? I don't want to know. Okay? 
one one thing we all come together and we all seek the face of God, oh Lord willing. We all pray and we're all praying, Lord willing, we're praying God's will. God's will be done. But what if it's God's will that you don't get that new car? What if it's God's will? Well, what do you, yes, I have. Uh, what, what are you going to do? You know, is, is it going to turn your life upside down? You know? No. If I'm praying for God's will and I don't get what it is that I'm praying for, I got God's will. So God, when we ask, we, we ask for prayers, um, one guy was telling me, he said, you know, so when God answers no, and I said, you know, we see it as no, but God didn't actually answer no. God answers this way. God answers yes, later, and I have something better for you. Okay? I have something better for you. You know, what you're praying for, if, if I'm praying for something and it's going to cause my destruction, Lord, please don't give me that. If I'm praying for something and, and if I get it, it's going to cause me to, to backslide and, and slip away from it. Please don't give me that. Don't do that. Okay? Help me because you see time from the end to the beginning. So you know that if I get whatever it is that I'm after here to get, and it's going to destroy me. You knew it, so help me, Lord. Don't don't let me be the um, don't don't let me be the catalyst that destroys my own world. Don't let me be the the tornado in my own trailer park. You know, let me let me move forward. Let me bend myself to your will. And if I bend myself to your will, then the best result is going to come out. Okay, it may not. I may not know it. Okay. Paul said, I've learned how to be content in all situations. And we need to learn how to be content in all situations. Okay? Sure we can. Sure we can, Lisa. Sure we can. If you want a prayer cloth, you should uh, message me your mailing address and I will send you one or two. One for you, one for your husband, or your one for your children. Um, but, yeah, count it all joy when you're 10. Exactly. Um but listen, that's, that, that's one of the things that happens in our life. We begin to pray. And as we begin to pray, we, we should become emboldened. Okay? We should become emboldened. Because as we pray, we realize we're, we're talking to God. But he's talking to his children. He's talking to little old me. And he loves little old me. I, I sit there and I watch my, my nephew, or nephews, my, my, my grandson. Um, all you have to do is uh, message me your mailing address and whatever request you want to. And I will, uh, I will, I will it'll be in tomorrow's mail if you get it to me tonight. So we come out there, we look at these things and we say, what am I going to do? God has got something good and better for you. And just because I didn't get what I wanted, hello, James. It doesn't mean I didn't get what I needed. And so we have to learn how to be content, not complacent. Complacency is not going to help you at all, okay? Complacency is sitting there and watching the, watching the, everything go by you and, you know, uh, watching your house fall down. You're like, oh, well. Yeah, it fell down. Oh, well. Complacent. I'm not going to do anything about it. I see it falling, but I'm not going to do anything. Biggest enemy of the church is complacency. People talk about, you know, the Satan's the biggest enemy. Complacency is the biggest enemy of the church. You see your brother and sister starting to get cold in the Lord. When you don't invite them over maybe and, you know, have a couple of uh, cups of coffee and, and maybe uh, encourage them in the Lord. You see your brother and sister going through a tough time. and You go, well, you know, we all go through tough times. Now, you could help them, but you don't. Okay. There's nobody out there that's not at some point in some some wise guilty of some of this, uh, you know. But but understand this: God wants what's best for us. God want and He wants to do more. He wants to give us life and life more abundantly. Okay, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Hey, Steve, 
I, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. But I've also got to do them. Okay? The, uh, the, 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 the steward that was given the talents in the, in, the, in the proverb, two of them took their talents and they turned them into, doubled them up, and the one took and hid it. All right? Do you think it was a mistake that the, that the master only gave him one, one talent? Sort of everything else in his life um, indicated that probably he wasn't going to do anything with this talent. There was really no need in putting a lot of talent a lot that there's not no need to put a lot of oil in that vessel it's just going to sit there on the shelf i don't use it very often and it's not usable now when i say i don't use it very often understand this it's not that god wouldn't use you it's that you're unavailable for use because if you put yourself in the game god's going to use it oh well if i can't be the quarterback i ain't going if i can't be the pitcher i ain't going hey I, I coached ball teams and stuff, and and you come to realize that the third base coach is in the ball game. No, he's not running the bases, okay, and he's not going to get any of the glory, but he's in the ball game, and that runner's coming in there to third base, and he's either waving his arm to go, or he's pushing his hands down to get down, or he's holding his hands up, telling him to stand still, you know, kind of stuff. Whatever it is, he's in the ball game. He's a part of the schematic. And without him, the runner is having to do something else that he wouldn't have to do. So when a person says, you know, um, I just want the Lord to use me. And then you start to disdain where the Lord used you. Well, you know, a uh, pastor called me wanting to know if I wanted to do a homeless ministry. I mean, what? I ain't never been homeless. I don't know about any of that. I don't know about anything you know, I don't know anything about being homeless. Well, no, but you know everything there is about being at home. So won't you go and tell them that there's a better life waiting if, they, if they're if they ready to make some adjustments? Why don't you go out there and, and provide some comfort to them? You know, uh, in today's world, most of the people who are homeless are homeless because they choose homeless. Okay? Not necessarily, I think I'm just going to walk out of my house and leave it. But it's it's, you know... Um, a lot of a lot of the people sleeping under the bridges in Atlanta, anyways, they don't want to sleep nowhere else. They're perfectly content with their life. Okay, um, they don't have any goals. They don't have any ambitions. Okay, in the first way, and so you know, but but you do the homeless ministry. You bless the ones that are that are just out there. Get, they come and get a sandwich. Uh, they come and get a, a sandwich and a cold drink. They thank you. Some of them, some of them don't even thank you. Some of them run off and look at you like this, you know, and they, they run off and you're like, well, you know what, man? There might be something wrong with their mind and stuff like that, and that's fine. You just pray for them. Pray for them too, okay? I, I don't I don't, I don't, don't hold prayer back for people. My wife will tell you, we had, uh, when, when we were at the post office, I'm sorry, I'm, let me go back. My, when, when you're in the homeless ministry and, and the, the, the these people, you know, they don't have a reason to trust you. Well, yeah, it's just giving them a sandwich and a, and a, and a cold water. That's right. But they've been offered sandwiches and cold water before, okay? And by people that didn't mean them any anything positive. These people have been used and abused in a lot of ways. So understand that and be sensitive. And so the homeless ministry can teach you how to be blessings to people, how to 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 have discourse with people that you would not ordinarily interact with. It will help you to develop the person you need to be in Christ. Because here's the reality, folks. And most Americans are about one month away from homeless anyways. And too many are, are, are one or two months away from homeless. We're, we're too close to a fine line that'll push us out the gate. All right, this, the, with this economy the way it is, it's unstable. The, 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 the joke up in the, the White House uh, everybody, every, anybody with one eye and half good sense can look at him and know he ain't got a clue where he's at, what he's doing. Too many, too many times he's walking off the stage, he's shaking hands with people that ain't there. He trips over air, apparently, you know. Um, but understand this. Anytime you move into ministry, 
Ministry means serve. And so these people, they don't have what you have. Or they don't have what I have. But that don't mean we, don't, we should not love them. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be ready to engage them. Okay? Yeah, we do. Um, so, if we keep our focus that it's about God, my mission is to take Jesus to as many souls as I can. My mission is to make sure that we are covered. Okay? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. People giving them rotten food. People have been some really nasty, really nasty to, to people. And, you know, I went to the nursing home, and I went to the nursing home for, I don't know, a couple of years. Um, and uh, I was one of the few pastors, one of the few ministers that would invite the ones that were behind the closed door, you know, the ones that had dementia and stuff like that, you know. And they want to come. They want to be in church. Okay, if they can remember that day, they want to come. They want to be in church. Okay, and uh, the nurses were really good not to send them in soiled. You give them a few minutes and let them know, hey, listen, we're going to have church, and and they, they're like, you know, um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll clean him up and bring him in, you know, or or whatever. And uh, there was this one lady back there, and uh, I went back and I said, uh, I said, anybody want to come to church? And she said, I want to go to church. I want to go to church. And uh, she come down through there, and she had on her purple, purple dress, with her it was it was fake pearls, but it was pearls. She had and she was dolled up, baby. She done put her lipstick on and and did her hair, and and she come. I mean, she come and she's on her walker, and every time that 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 thing had hit, she said, "I'm going to church. I'm going to church. I'm going to church. I'm going to church." And she was so excited. She come to church, and you know, I mean, it it was just a you know, it's a little one little side room in there and it was pretty full that particular night and she just sat there and she was just they sang songs and she sang songs and i'd preach a little bit and she'd amen boy she was getting she got right with me you know i'd say something and she'd say amen mm, that's good <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know and and her mind was about halfway in okay she knew she wanted to go to church she knew she wanted to be in church she knew she loved serving god she didn't really know a whole lot else, but she knew that, okay? And so we we had church. And so um, one of the one of the nurses had asked me, said, you know, said, why do you do that? She said, they don't remember. You know, they ain't going to remember tomorrow. I said, maybe they'll sleep good tonight, and I'll remember tomorrow. You know, it's to serve, okay? It's to serve. If they're in their right state of mind, they may not remember it ever. Or they might come back to at some point and remember it and go, you know, wow, boy, I remember being in church. Boy, right over yonder. Don't deny people because of what your misgivings are. And that just, I, and I, I didn't get mad at the woman. I was, I was like, man, how terrible is that? Okay. Wow, Steve. Wow. You know, um, we went down one time and it was going to be, it was a cold snap coming. And uh, a friend of mine, his his business was doing really good at the time. And it's before 2007, I'll tell you that. And uh, he went down to the Walmart store and they were having a sale on sleeping bags. And he bought every one of the sleeping bags and rode down to downtown Atlanta and handed them off the church, the, the back of the truck. And it uh, sleeping bags and sandwiches or something like this, food just in general. And uh, man, uh, these, these, these homeless people were coming from everywhere and just in a matter of minutes, all the sleeping bags were gone. You know, it's like, wow, look at that. Okay, and, and nobody got two. Okay, one person, one bag. And they were all gone in a matter of a few minutes. And so we went up there one time with uh, sandwiches and, and sweet tea and uh, and this one woman, she's like, I can't, I'm diabetic. So he had a cooler full of ice water, you know, frozen water bottles, you know. You know, you're trying to bless somebody, you know. And uh, my friend, he moved to Kentucky now, but you know, you're trying to bless somebody. You're not, you're not trying to 
I'm only going to bless you within the parameters that I define. You know. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, bless you there, Steve. Anybody. I, uh, I was the uh, coordinator for the food drive in McDonough, Georgia for 25, 30 years. And uh, the first year that I was doing it, my wife and I, well, a couple of years now, but my wife and I, we had been to uh, the Gulf War, her and I, and uh, the, the post office was paying us because we were on administrative leave because we were ordered to active duty. Well, when they come out and we submitted our orders, it said on them that they were um, volunteer orders. Now, I didn't volunteer for nothing, okay? Now, my wife did. She did volunteer, but she didn't work at the post office at times. It didn't matter. I didn't volunteer for nothing. They called me and told me to get on the plane, okay? I was going to stay home and be Mr. Mom. I had 16 hours from the time I found out I was going to the time the plane took off, okay, um, because of what I did with supply in the Air Force. And uh, so um, when I come back and I submitted my orders and it said um, volunteer. Now, later on, they amended the orders, but I never got any money back. They just took and just cut off. They said, well, you owe us this money, so they just took it all back. Well, when they took it all back, I'm sitting here and I got a, a, a check for like a zero, and, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know what we're going to do? Well, there we were. We were broke as we could be. We had, you know, we had a house. We were still running the house. And um, so, okay, Sarah. So so we went through this time, okay, and, and it's like we had friends come up to the house, and they just brought us groceries. Like, you know, we know you're going through a tough time. You know, it's going to be a couple more weeks before you get paid because, you know, this and that. So, um, you know, we got through it, but it was a tough time. And so I was, I was talking to this guy, and he said, you know, he said, Cloud, he said, uh, he said it's the, the carriers have to pick up the food in the food drive. And it's always the, the Saturday before Mother's Day, all right? It's, there's a reason for that, okay? Saturday before Mother's Day, everybody's feeling generous, okay? And so this guy was like, you know, man, they just, no. He said, because you, we're going to pick this food up and there's going to be people that they don't need that food and they're going to get it. And I told him, I said, you know, sir, I said, Bobby, you're right. I said, there are people that will, that don't need that food, not one whit, and they're going to get it and they're going to eat it. I said, but in order for you to get it to the people that truly need it, you've got to work, you, you got to work around those people. Just like we do here with with uh, with my beautiful, wonderful moderators that keep me from seeing some of the nastiness and filth that comes in, okay? For us to get the word of God out to whoever it is that wants to receive it, all those Tootsie Roll people are, are there and they have to be, you know, dealt with kind of stuff. They're there. So what, what choice do you make? Do you say, well, okay, well, uh, the Tootsie Rolls are going to be on there, so I'm just not going to do it. No, no, let's do it. And and who knows, maybe in time, maybe we will win some of those Tootsie Rolls around, you know. Uh, maybe maybe they'll sit there and listen long enough that the Lord will deal with their heart and, and they'll, they'll come to Jesus. I don't know. I never know what's going to happen. So uh, that's the way I approach it. So then he, I, I told him, I said, you know, and I told him, I said, listen, we come back from the Gulf. I said, me and Dee was sitting there at the house. I said, if it hadn't been for friends of ours bringing bags of groceries, okay? If it hadn't been for friends of ours bringing bags of groceries, we would have got real skinny in a hurry, okay? Um, you know, we, we were working every day. And, you know, everything we were making, my wife was actually working at the Waffle House, and, and she, was, she was bringing home cash money at night. We generally buy some little something to eat and put the rest of it in the gas tank, you know, trying to catch up. I was working every hour I could work. Well, that ain't every hour. Okay. I was, I was what's called a part-time flex, which meant that one day I might go in and work two hours or four hours and, you know, sorry, Claire, we don't need you no more. Boom. 
four hours pay. The next day I might go in there and work 12. Okay. And, uh, wow. So day to day, you know, but my wife was bringing in money from Waffle House from tips, you know, she was waiting tables. So, you know, we got through it. And that's what I told my wife. I said, anybody, anybody might need a bag of groceries. Okay. I give the, the, the things flip around on you and, and all the things that you know to be true can suddenly be not so true. And so, you know, boom, it's just like that. And, and he was like, you know what? You're right. He said, I'll collect it because the carriers didn't have to collect it. They, they could, they could choose to ignore it. You know, I, I never had a carrier that did that, that I know of. Um, I did have some carriers that refused to pick it up. They said, I will know where it's at and y'all can go out and get it. And we went out and picked it up, you know, um, I, I, honestly, no, I didn't think much of them, but I didn't think much of them because of who they were, not because of what they did. All right. Um, Amen to that, Sarah Lou. My goodness. At, exactly. Um, when uh, we we hit another spell um, after the after oh eight and oh nine, uh, we we were we invested some money with what we thought was a friend, and uh, and he he got rid of the money. I'm not going to tell you that he stole the money. Okay, he got rid of the money, and uh, all of a sudden the notes come due. You know, we're supposed to be getting this big return. Well, it didn't come. And so we ended up having to go bankrupt. And we went we went chapter 11. And instead of of uh, just going, okay, y'all are screwed. No money for y'all. We paid everybody all their money back. We were getting, we were taking $1,100 off the top of my paycheck every month. And so me and D were both working. And it, it was at that time that D got injured. And the supervisor at the post office didn't like her they were they were competing for the job and this other woman got it because she liked to lean over the desk and you know we had a freshly divorced postmaster that was you know thought that she was built of gold or something anyways uh she got the job and she didn't have the qualifications she she didn't have the qualifications to be in charge of watching to make sure toilet paper stayed in lavatories but she got the job. And so suddenly she was in charge. And um, like so many small people, when she got in charge, she started, she was, it was, it was, if you, if you weren't one of her favorite people, she was out to get you with a vengeance. The stories about postal management are not stories. They're true. Uh, I've, I've seen them firsthand. My wife and I both seen them firsthand. We both saw them. Um, and, and so, the, and they wouldn't do anything about her. We went through a couple of postmasters with her, and eventually the Postal Inspection Service walked her off the floor, okay? Because every time this happens, they think they, be, they become untouchable, and the more they do, the more they think they can get away with, and eventually they do something that you can't get away with. And I don't know what it was. I didn't ask. I was just, I, 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 I don't, I don't wish ill on people, but when she walked off, I breathed a sigh of relief. I was like, oh, my goodness. Because knowing that she was on the floor, I knew I had a target on my back every step I took around that post office. Okay? And uh, and, and she, she she kept a target on D. Well, they sent D during the same time that the guy disappeared with her money. <clears throat> this this uh, supervisor, uh, D got hurt. She sent her home without pay for 11 months. We lost two houses. We lost everything we had. Okay, well, lost both of our houses, and we ended up moving in to a different town. Uh, we still work the same place, but um, you know. And so we we filed bankruptcy, and when we filed bankruptcy, we filed eleven instead of a seven. We could have filed a seven and just it'd have been like too too bad. Y'all depended on us, but we paid everybody their money back. We couldn't pay them interest, but we did pay them money back. And so. Um, so then when we went through that time, you know, she and I, you know, that was, I died during that time. Um, that was in, uh, yeah, that was a uh, seven, eight that I died in, in 05. Uh, so I died before that. And, and then later on the, the, uh, 
the other stuff started happening. And th when we, we were going through these things, the Lord is continually calling you to a higher service. You're like, God, yeah, I died. Um, May 1st, 2005. And so you're like, God, you want me to do more? I mean, my plate's full, God. Okay, my plate's full. What do you want? Right? And and God says, you know, more. And so God is doing, no, I didn't see anything. And so God is dealing with us and trying to, to, to advance us in the kingdom of God. The miracles are happening. I'm praying for people. They're, they're receiving the Holy Ghost. I'm praying for people. And, and I was embarrassed. I turned my license in. I had a, a general license with the United Pentecostal Church. I turned it in. I said, if I'm, I said, I'm not going to embarrass the organization. And my pastor told me, he said, you don't have to do that. He said, this is, these are things that happen to, that they happen to everybody. You didn't do anything to cause this. Okay. You couldn't stop. They got hurt. You could not stop the tyrannical um, malfeasance of this of this supervisor. She broke HIPAA laws. She called Dee's doctor. She 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 sent IG complaints and and declared that Dee wasn't hurt. I'm like, you know, she's got an MRI showing she's got a torn meniscus or whatever it was, and you're mad because she hurt her knee years and years ago. Okay, this is not that, but it, see, in her mind, the jealousy had eaten her up. And, and she couldn't stand it. See, Dee could actually do her job, okay? And she couldn't. And and everybody knew it. So when whenever Dee would come in to sub in, she was what the post office called the 204, which is a substitute supervisor. Dee would go in and do her job, and she would do it so well, and the, the place would just flow, right? Just flow. And then when the, the other person that you noticed I have not put a name on would come back, um... It would all it would go to in a hand basket just like that as soon as she walked on the floor the the tension you could feel the evil on the woman okay and so you know she would she'd come over and she would, she would try when she couldn't get the d she'd try and come get me now if you've been watching me for a little while you probably figured out that when she got in the water with me she was way over her head but um she did yeah, all right. Well, Thomas, when we repent, God forgives us, buddy. But exactly, God's not the author of chaos. So <clears throat> anyway, I'm telling you, I'll tell this. So as we move through this thing, you know, um, we learn to depend on God in, in all kinds of different ways and stuff. So when when I say it's got to be about God, you need to know that what I mean is it's got to be about God. Okay. So we moved from up there. We moved to a different place. After we, we ended up losing both of our houses, we moved to another house that was we, was half the price of what we were paying on the two houses, but it was as big as both of those houses put together. Uh, but at the same time, we were still we we were we were still paying our um, eleven hundred dollars off the top every month, and every every time we would every time we would pay. You know, I mean, it's like, man, you know, we were tithing, we were giving in the offering, and you can't outgive God. You know, we we still holding up our responsibilities. We we gave in the building fund, and God blessed us, and God blessed us, and God blessed us. And people say, well, I don't see how you you made it through there. I said, I don't see how I made it through there except God. If, if it hadn't been for God, you know, we'd have been toes up. We might have had to gone back and went chapter seven after all and we could have at any given time had we we've been willing to to do that we could have went back and put a chapter seven in um and then we we started getting the harassment from the courts and uh yeah thomas send me a dm um we started getting harassments from the courts and the, the 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 judge, I, we had uh, people coming in. But listen, we've already declared like, every every outstanding debt we had, and we got it. We had a what do they call it? Um, amortization or whatever it is. It tells you here's where you're going to be paying, you know, and this is how much you're going to be paying. And and uh, it 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 was like everything that could go wrong went wrong. 
our car broke down. And and I'm not talking about broke down, like, you know, let's go fix a spark plug. I'm talking about uh -huh. it was dead or a hammer. Okay, so we had to get another car. And God made a way. Okay, we couldn't finance a car. God made a way. So many times, so many times, when, when I've seen people that if you are, are, are forced to depend on God, and that's what it takes in a lot of cases. It takes being forced to depend on God. I, you know, I, to really get to the point where it's, it's God or nothing. And then you watch God come through and you're like, whoa, how did I, it did, it, how did I? Nothing, nothing here. How did I, it's nothing. God did it in his amazing way. God did it. And I get to be the blessed person. Okay. Wonderful, Euless. I'm glad to hear that. You know, I'm glad to hear that God is working. I'm not glad to hear that you're in, you're in a distressed situation, by the way. There goes the life flight. Now, I told y'all I'd be living in a little bit. Um, but that's so many times what we're dealing with as we're as we're pushing through this we're waiting on circumstance to change you're never waiting on god okay we're waiting on the circumstance to change so that so that we can facilitate the movement of god lots of times listen you want to mess something up help god okay i, I I'm, I was, when i was pastor i tell him i said listen you want to really mess something up help god do it you want to hear god laugh Tell him what your plan is. Okay? <laughs> you gotta go, all right, see how that works out for you. Go ahead. No, really. All right, no, uh -uh, Lord, help me. Lord, let's go with your plan, please. Lord, help me, help me, help me. <laughs> I've seen my plans. They always end up on the rocks, you know. <laughs> you know, man, they need, they need a stick big enough to float on. You know, what used to be my boat, there's not a stick big enough to float on. So, always... We trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I'm sorry, Larry. I really am. I, I can't do anything about that. Our our web's doing, doing good up here. We've got clear weather. It's hot. I mean, well, it's not. I'm sorry. It's hot for the mountains. It's great up here, guys. I was out today watching my neighbor. He was, he was doing some grading for me, and... Uh, and 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 it was it was hot, okay. But it ain't hot like it is down. We're we're up we're up in the we're not in the high mountains. We're in lower Appalachian, but you know we're up in the mountains far enough that it's cooler here. And we have always almost always got a little bit of wind, a little bit of breeze. A little bit of breeze makes a lot of difference. And so that's what I wanted to, I wanted to talk about right there. Um, but anyhow, we were going through that, and as we went through. Oh yeah, my son's in Texas. He's up uh, north, north of Dallas, and he. I talked to him the other day, and he's he's. It's a hundred and some change every day, and all them people in West Texas, it's worse. But um, when when we were we were doing we were going through all this, you cling to one another, and you hold on to God. Yep. Um, yep. That the the the, uh, the the guy out there in Arizona. The bee, the, the killer bee man, he is, he is on, on target. I wouldn't want his job. Cumberland Gap. Okay, then. But uh, the heat stirred him up. I can believe that. It don't take nothing. Um, it doesn't take nothing. Sarah, somebody hacked your phone, too? Bless your heart. You're getting it. They're coming at you in full tilt, girl. You're doing something for God, so it's happening. That's what, generally speaking, the devil... The devil doesn't worry about about people that aren't doing anything. People that go in there and they sit on the church pews every Sunday and, and you know, and they get up and they leave and they make sure they make it to the Golden Corral in time to eat before the next denomination gets out and you know, um, but yep. Last year you couldn't you can you can hear this behind me, right? This chick a chick chick a chick. Last year was the uh, the seven year and you couldn't hear. It, uh, nothing but the ring. I mean, it was, oh man, it was, it was something else. Um, so, you know, when, when, uh, 
when when the you got that right. If the devil's not interested in you, he's not concerned about you. Um, and and you know, so when when we get ready to do things with God, we always understand and understand this too. It's going to be inconvenient. Oh my goodness, inconvenience. If you're going to do anything for God, it's going to be inconvenient. And the reason that it's going to be inconvenient um, is because that's that's what that's what they do. They come out there and they're you know uh, the the minions of Satan are going to come and they're going to attack you in service. They're not going to attack you if you're just going to sit on the pews. Listen, no problem, okay. But when you get ready, you start telling people about Jesus and you start to shake in his kingdom. That's what this fast is about. We are shaking the foundations of hell's kingdom, if you will, his princedom. Okay, we're coming to get these people. I can feel the Holy Ghost moving right now. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just going to let it go. We're coming for the people that are locked up in sin, that have not understood salvation, that don't know Jesus, that don't know there is a God, much less a God that loves them. We're coming for people who've never heard of God. We're coming for people who, who served God all their life and then turned away and fell back. We're coming for every person out there who is, is, is still breathing because God, Jesus died for every one of them. God is not a respecter of persons. So I don't look out there and try to figure out which one I need to witness to. I'm witness to whichever one will let me witness to him. If it's a homeless guy, I'm witness to him. If it's the mayor, I'm a witness to him. When I carried mail, I had the mayor and I had the homeless all on my route. And I would witness Jesus to him in, in, in turn. Now, I didn't get a chance to witness to the mayor a bunch. I did get a chance to speak to him. And I did talk to him about God a lot, you know. But just to witness to him, you know, kind of stuff, you know, because he was the mayor, you know. But anyways, um, <clears throat> we would we would get there and we would start, we would begin to... Um, we would begin to talk about God. We would begin to, to, to build up to something. And God would move. And God scares sinners. Now, it's not the scare of an anvil falling on your head. It's not the scare of a snake. God scares sinners because they, they, they become uncertain about what they're going to have to change. Yeah, I've seen it too many times. Well, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm ready to give this up yet, Clell. And I'm like, listen, let me tell you right now. You repent of your sin and you come to God, okay? And you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, right? Now you and I both know that if it is sin indeed, that God's gonna God's gonna they, they're gonna see that immediately and boom, right? Boom, boom. All right. And a person who's trying to serve God, it's a whole lot easier to drop those things off to the side than it is a person that's trying to be lukewarm, sort of, you know, I, well, you know, I go to church, I'm a good guy. Let me tell you, there's going to be a whole lot of good guys in hell. All right, there's going to be a whole lot of, of really good, nice, wonderful people in hell. Because it's not about being good. It's about being obedient. Obedient to the word of God. Obedient to God's holy word. Obedient. Okay? The Bible tells us, Study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we want to be as close to God as we can be. How far from God's word can you get before you become in danger? I don't know. I don't know how far God's grace goes, okay? I don't know how far God's grace is going to extend, but I know where his word ends. And that's where I start preaching, thou shalt and thou shalt not, okay? So when a person comes in, they say, well, you know, I just don't agree with that. Okay. Well, what are you saying? I said, well, if the word of God says it, then it's true. Okay? Me agreeing with it or not agreeing with it is not relevant. Okay? It's not relevant at all. Hallelujah. So what are you talking about, coach? Um, you know, if I'm not going to be obedient to God's word, then I'm not going to get into heaven. Okay? 
I'm not going to get that. Uh, what about me? I don't know. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But work it out in relation with the word of God. Okay? Yeah. Paul taught, Paul, Paul declared, I of, of sinners of which I am chief. Paul was charged with murder of Stephen. When If you read in Acts, I want to say seven, Stephen gets up there and he preaches and they, the, the men threw their cloaks at a young man's feet named Saul. Okay? Now, if Saul had told them to pick up their, their cloaks, they would not have stoned Stephen. But because he left them lie, he was in the Pharisee, he was wearing his Pharisaical garments, he was condoning the death of Stephen. Therefore, the blood wasn't on the men that threw the rocks, but on the authority. You can delegate, you can delegate authority, but you cannot delegate responsibility. It was his responsibility to say, that man is not deserving of death. Hallelujah. Do I believe in the Holy Ghost? Absolutely. With the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Yes, I do. Acts 2.38. Acts 19. Acts 10. Yeah, I do. So then when, 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 when the men and women are desiring to, to serve God, okay, the world, see Saul, it shows him in his unreformed state, okay, he's a murderer. He was actively pursuing Christians. He's got letters in his pocket giving him the authority to incarcerate, to beat, to force them to renounce Jesus Christ. On his road to Damascus, when he meets Jesus, and he's, he looks up and he says, a, a, a great light comes and knocks him off of his burrow. He's down there on the ground, and he says, he said, Lord, who art thou? He would have said, Adonai, okay? Or he would have said Jehovah, depending on whether he was speaking in Greek or whether he was speaking in, in, uh, in Hebrew. He may have said it, but he would have said the unpronounceable uh, tetragrammaton, Yahweh, Okay, or he would have said, Adonai, who are you? And and the Lord God Almighty said, and it's written in, in, in red in, in, the, in the Bible, it said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Is it hard for thee to kick against the pricks? Okay, so understand that. One minute, this guy has got his letters in his pocket, ready to go. And, and get these people, and, and the next minute, he's one of them. That's why I tell you this. If you want to destroy your enemy, make them a friend. Make them a brother in Christ. And don't have enemies in the kingdom of God. Okay? That is to say, understand what I'm saying. Everybody has seen it happen. Church is splitting up because two large egos couldn't share the same room. Okay, we had a church split. It's been years ago. We had a church split where this guy, and he was an awesome choir director, but he thought that the entire service needed to be about the choir. It needed to be about singing. It needed to be about him playing the piano and him singing in particular. And, and you know, and, and him, you know, leading the choir and boy. And, and he was good. He was dynamic. Okay, but you need the word of God. If you don't have a choir, I can have church with the Bible. Okay? I can have church. We're having church right now. I ain't, we ain't got no choir. We ain't got no singing. We ain't got no music. We're having church right now. Two or more gathered in here. He's among us. We're having church right now. And it's profitable church. We're being edified. We're growing in Christ Jesus. I can't teach you without learning something. I can't point one finger at y'all without pointing three right back at me. I can't preach to you something that I can't live. I told y'all one day I was actually preaching. I was I was preaching at my my, my church. I was preaching and and I something came that I was fixing to say and and I had to I literally had to take and just sort of jump down on my tongue and shut it off. And I was like, you can't say that. You're not doing it. And I I shut it down, and and I I I was convicted. I was like, okay. You know, I, I mean, I didn't stop preaching. I changed my, my service tone and went a different way. But I went home and fixed my house. 
Okay. Me to preach you something I ain't going to do. Okay. That's one of them things that says you, you, you sell it, but you don't buy it. You know, you promote it, but you don't buy it. Okay. You don't, you don't, you don't love what you're, you're talking about. And so we were, we were preaching the word of God. And when you preach the word of God, the only authority that, that, that you can have. And so I would, I would preach God's word and we was in a small church. All right, one Sunday, we would have a piano player. That was all, all the choir we had was a piano player, and, and she'd have her little daughter get up there and sing with her, you know, and uh, her little daughter's voice hadn't come in, so you understand the scratchy chalkboard kind of stuff. And, you know, but they were, listen, the Bible says make a joyful noise. The Bible does not sing, sing, does not say sing eloquently before the Lord. The Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's what qualifies me, by the way. Uh, you know, and, and so we understand that when these young people are up there and they're singing and they're, they're singing their heart out, God receiving that as, as beautiful praise. So get with them. Well, I can't get with that. That, that person can't sing. Uh, you know what? Look for the anointing, not the talent. Look, because I'm going to tell you right now, I'd rather be anointed than good. All right? I would much rather be anointed and good. I know some speakers that are that that man. They can they can speak. Oh my goodness, boy, can they speak? They just just command the the language. They're they're articulate. And they speak in so many different vernaculars. And and they, 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 right. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. And and I've watched some of your some of your and you get through and you you speak for an hour and a half and you never say Jesus and you never say God. And you never say, sinner, you need to repent. You never say anything that's going to cause somebody to maybe not put much in the offering plate because your focus is that offering plate. Okay. And you show it in, you show it in what you do. If your focus, my focus is winning people to God. Lord bless me with that. Um, I, I like to win people to God. I want to see people stay in God. So if you're if you're in God, I'm trying to bring us further in God. I'm trying to find out where you are, hook to it, and we'll both move forward in Christ. I've got to move forward. If I'm going to teach you anything, I have to learn it to teach it. So you know, bada boom, and 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 so you get in there, you get these 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 guys that they're they're eloquent and they're articulate, and they're oh my gosh, did you hear him speak? And I'm like, yeah, I'd have bought a used car from him. Okay, but I don't, he didn't say anything about God. He didn't say anything about Jesus. He didn't say anything about repentance. He didn't say anything, he darn sure didn't say anything about sin. Okay, because people get, they, they, when you start talking about sin, people, hey, you know, you got to be careful. People will get offended. I'm going to offend some people. I've had, I've offended people on here and they, they, you know, I've had them unfollow me and I've had them uh, unfriend me and I've had them uh, go in there and just tell me, you know, my God, why did you say that? Didn't you know that was me? I'm like, no, I didn't. Okay, when you preach, you preach in a blanket. The blanket falls down and everybody hears what you hear. Okay, I don't call people out. I don't point somebody, this is you and you better. No, I uh -uh, know. Uh -uh. Because you see, first and foremost, that's me directing the word of God. I would rather that the word of God directed you. Okay, and so... What, you just you, if you're gonna if you're gonna call out sin, okay, it doesn't mean you're calling out the sinner. You call out sin, and you call it what it is. This is the highway that's going to take you down to the lake of fire. Okay, the way to God is straight and narrow, and few there be that find it. Okay, few there be that find it. What I'm not in charge of okaying your lifestyle, okay? I am in charge, and only if and people allow you to be, but I'm only in charge of, of delivering the word of God. I use the King James translation, 1611. King James wanted to know what the word of God said. He had it translated. It's not a version, okay? If there are any errors in it, I hadn't found them. I've, I've, I've heard all the people, oh, well, Francis Bacon was, was William Shakespeare, and he put a whole bunch of stuff in there. And I'm like, you know what? Um, the fact of the matter is, is you, you grab stuff like that, and you report it as truth. 
okay? And then you look at things that are absolutely documented and you say they are false. You are a dyed-in-the-wool liberal, okay? You, once you're saying it is the only evidence you need for it to be valid. And no amount of factual, articulated, structured argument is enough to take down your argument because you just you just know it. You just believe it. And I'm like, wow. Or the atheist don't believe there is a God. I'm like, man, you got more faith than me. What do you mean I got more faith than you? I don't believe there's a God. I'm sure you do. I believe there's a God and he created the universe. You believe there isn't a God and somehow it got here. How did it get here? Well, it just was. It was from what? Everything comes from something. We learned that, chicken egg. Okay? We learned that. Babies come from somewhere. Fire comes from everywhere. Everything comes from something else. So where did all this come from? Well, I can't get into all that. I mean, I've, I've had the ar arguments more than once. And, and our arguments, discussions, I really won't argue with idiots. Okay? They only want to they only want to pull down anything you've got and to diminish or 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 belittle anything that you've got. So there's no sense in wasting your time. You've only got an amount of time. Don't waste it. Go and talk to somebody that wants to talk to you. Yeah, I bet you Stephen Hawkins singing a different tune about right now, Joe. I didn't wish no ill on him. In truth, he was one of the smartest men on the planet. All he had to do was sit around and learn. He, he couldn't do anything else. So, absolutely. Um. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I got. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take y'all in the house for a second. I gotta go in here and get some more coffee. Ow. Mm. My back's getting better, but at the same time, it's getting better. Um, it's still got a twinge in it. So y'all forgive me if I if I cry or something like that, you know. It's going to get dark for a second because uh, I'm going in here in the kitchen and it's dark. I'm going to turn the light on in a second. And uh, y'all just hold on a second. Oh, ow, oh, here we go. Okay, so now I have to get some coffee because coffee makes the world go round, as you know. Let's see if I can get this right. Doing this one-handed is not the way to roll folks uh whew. but i need my coffee all right we're gonna turn the lights back out and go back outside come on winston you want to go outside winston wants to go outside y'all he may not right now though because he ain't eating so you want to go come on yep he does winston loves outside Blue, not so much. Okay, I had to get me some coffee. You can't have coffee with Clay if you can't have coffee. Now, all right, went over that. I'm talking about, um, and I want to, I want to, I want to go ahead and go back to some and commend my moderators and tell them how much I really appreciate what they do because, um, because uh, they keep some of those things from distracting me, and I appreciate it. Uh, I mean, he would say, <laughs> I bet you're right, Joe. I will bet you he's right. Yeah, you know, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of sound mind. 365 times in the Bible, one for each day, it says, do not fear. Okay, do not fear. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that are going on. All right, now, I'm going to go back and talk to y'all real quick. I have to do this. My son tells me I'm supposed to do this. Is I have to go back and tell y'all that uh, we are now Amazon affiliated. And if you go to my bio, my, my link, it will show you an Amazon link. I'm going to figure out how to change that when I get my son to show me. I'm going to find something interesting. What do y'all think I ought to put on my bio? Think about something. Send me a message. Don't put it on here because I won't see it. Um, but I'm going to put something on my bio. And... Uh, so when people go, if they go to Amazon off of the link that's on my page and they buy what's on there or they buy something else while they're still on that link, then a few pennies will go to Coffee with Clell. Coffee with Clell, I am Coffee with Clell. Um, and my wife and I provide the funds for a ministry called the Prayer Cloth Ministry. And um, it, it's 100% free. Nobody, nobody pays for a prayer cloth. 
we mail them to you. I have to have a mailing address to, to mail you one. So I need you to send me your mailing address. If you can't just send it to me, then you can email me. I'm going to put my email up here in a minute. I'm going to show it to you. You can take a screenshot of my email. Hello, Bizarre. And, and, and you can get a prayer cloth. This is a prayer cloth. That's all it is. We take a drop of oil and we touch it on there. My wife and I pray over over that prayer cloth and we mail it to whoever, wherever, whether it's whether whether they're in India, China, if they can give us a mailing address, we're gonna mail them a prayer cloth. Here is my email. If you would rather not put your business on, on the app, you can send me an email and, and I will I will mail you a prayer cloth. You have to let me know what your mailing address is. If you won't let me know your mailing address, I cannot give it to you. Okay, we can put you on a prayer list, but we can't can't send you a prayer cloth. Okay, so take a take a screenshot, and that's what you get. Okay, so so we do that, and the prayer cloth ministry is we're building a worldwide web of prayer warriors, and that leads us into our our unity fast. What we're doing is we're putting aside differences. Okay. We're putting aside differences with that that people have in their denominations, etc. They're saying, oh, you know, I don't believe this and I do believe that and I don't believe this. Listen, I'm gonna teach them what I believe, and you know, and everybody that listens don't agree. But we all agree that God's word is true. We all agree, agree that Jesus Christ is 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 there. And so, um, sweet, we're we're always wanting to um we're always wanting to follow the will of God. And so we want to unify. And the Bible teaches the unity of the body, you know, or the spirit until we can come together in unity of the body. We got to come together. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We can have two people on Friday, you know, I mean, just think about that. Redundancy matters. It's good. So we've got people that, that are coming to God. Okay. We need, we need this, unity in here we face one enemy one common enemy doesn't matter what else we face one common enemy his name is satan and his goal is to do evil to us so let's stand and let's face the devil let's stand against the devil let's stand for the power of god Let's trust in the Lord with all our hearts, leaning not to our own understanding. Let's put all of our faith in him. And as we unify against Satan, I'm, I'm right now, I am, I'm, I'm going to stop here in just one second and I'm going to, we're, we're fixing to rebuke a demon. Um, it's a, it's a confounding spirit. Lord, in Jesus name right now, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have no power here. You have no power here, Satan. In Jesus' name, be gone. Get out. Go away. You have no power. You have no power. In Jesus' name. We, we, we plead the blood over this gathering of men and women. We plead the blood. We plead your stripes. We plead your healing. We're praying for Lisa, Lord, that you would con that you would heal her, that you would give her strength. We're praying for you, Lord, that you would continue with him and you would help him and minister to him in all of his areas of understanding. And, and Lord, that you would in enable him to overcome whatever it is that he's facing right now. We're praying, Lord, that right now in Jesus' name, that you would move upon us, that you would overcome whatever enemy, whatever obstacle, whatever hurdle stands before us in the power and the name of Jesus, we plead the blood. Jesus, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. We want to pray. I want to pray right now for Jill. Delivery from non-stop attacks on her faith from the enemy. Lord, we don't expect Satan to stop attacking people who are trying to do good. We're just going to ask you, Lord, to raise a hedge up and keep him from getting to her. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's good to have you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Right now, in Jesus' name, we're asking you to keep your hand upon these men and these women for Thomas, Lord, wherever he went back in there, that you would minister to him, God, that you would raise him up, that you would embolden him in your word, that you would give him insights, that you would give him direction in your word, that you would empower him, God, to not just forsake and come away from that lifestyle, but to reach back in and bring men and women out of that lifestyle that want to come to God. Lord, in Jesus' name, their spirits are in desire to reach you. Hmm. Want to continue to pray for Heather. She's got some CPS issues. Uh, Ron Garrett was in the hospital. Um, there's so many, there's so many, so many needs. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I'm just going to sit right here for a minute. I'm going to tear you around and I'm going to see what God, which, which way God is going to direct me to go with this. I'm just, I, listen, if we, if we can't, Robin, right now in Jesus' name, um, we want to call her out and we want to call Sarah's neighbors out. She needs to reach them with the word of God. Let her, let her words be anointed in Jesus' name. If right now you've got a neighbor, if you've got a friend, a brother and sister, and you're thinking, boy, I wish I could speak God's word to them right now. Call their name out and just say, you know, in Jesus name, in Jesus name, right now in Jesus name, and then call their name out. Lord, call them, Lord, touch them, Lord, move on them, Lord, bring them here. Lord, we want to pray for, for Kenna Hartwell, Lord, that you would, you would put healing on her, Lord, right now in Jesus name. God, we don't know what her issues are, but you do. So Father, we're asking in Jesus name, hallelujah, to touch and to move and to, to help God right now in Jesus' name, forgiving and blessing and guiding. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father, bless God and keep, forgive, lead God, Father. Your will be done. Your will be done. Your will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, right now, right now, right now, Satan, we bind you. You have no power here. You have no power here, Satan. We're pleading the blood. We're pleading the blood of Jesus right now. We're pleading the blood of Jesus, the most powerful weapon on the face of the earth. We're pleading the blood of Jesus. We're pleading the blood. We're pleading his stripes for healing for these folks in here. They need healing, God. We're pleading your stripes. We're pleading your blood. Cover our sins. Cover our shortcomings. Cover the fact, Lord, we're just men. We're just women. We're just, and you are everything. You are not just. You are everything. God, wash over us. Oh, God, hallelujah. That was that song used to go, sweep over my soul. Oh, my God, hallelujah. Sweep over our souls, Lord, right now. Let your unction come, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let your unction come, Father. Touch us. Touch us. Sweep over us, Lord. Sweep over us, Lord. Oh, God. I feel the Holy Ghost right now, folks. I'm telling you. I feel the Holy Ghost. I hope you feel the Holy Ghost. I hope you feel his spirit moving on you. I hope you feel his spirit on you right now. Oh, yearless man, my heart's crying out for you, brother. Right now, in Jesus' name, just let it wash over you. I'm punish y'all. I'm going to sing this song. Y'all just listen. Listen to the words. Don't worry about my singing. It's, it's terrible. But he goes, <clears throat> Sweep over my soul. Sweep over my soul, sweet spirit, sweep over my soul, for my rest is complete when I sit at your feet, sweet spirit, sweep over my soul. Oh, my God, just let it sweep over you. Just let it sweep over you right now. I feel the Holy Ghost moving. I feel that the power, the power.
power to deliver is in the air. The power of the deliverance is here tonight. The power of healing is here tonight. The power of forgiveness is here tonight. The power to be forgiven is here. The power to forgive people things you thought you never could forgive them is here. The power to release yourself from the things that have bound you in the earth is here tonight for you to take access that you can release of the things in the earth and you can find yourself bound to the things in heaven that you can take and fully grasp the spirit of God that you can just hold on with both hands and say, Lord Jesus, take me to a new level. Take me to new heights. Show me new things. Use me in different areas. Oh, ooh. Ooh. It's 90 degrees. It's cold out here. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm telling you right now, folks. <clears throat> we get this unity prayer going further and further, a little bit further every week. It goes, there's more people joining and more people joining. It's going to become... What, what's the word that they use? Um, exponential. Okay. If 10 were the first week, then 100 the second week, and 1,000 the third week, then 10,000 or 100,000 or a million. I don't know. I'm inviting pastors to join the fast. Bring your churches. Okay. Bring your congregations into the fast. You don't have to tell me you're doing it. Just do it. Just tell God you're doing it. That's the, 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 God knows. It ain't about how many. It ain't about, oh my, well, I can not I can only do so and so. So I no, I can't do anything. But together, why did God confound the languages in the Tower of Babel? Let's see, that was Genesis 11. I'm gonna think about that, Genesis 11. Let's see. Listen, Genesis 11. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now, you see the pride of man coming up right there, okay? You see the pride of man coming up. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do, okay? We're using that positively. Nothing will be restrained from us, whatever we have imagined to do. God's not going to come down and confound our language. God's going to come down and unify our body. God is coming to unify the body of Christ. God is coming to bring unity where we have found division. God is coming to bring the body of believers together in the name of Jesus, that we can oppose the common enemy, Satan, that we can bring his minions down, that we can take his walls down, that we can praise God and the walls of Jericho fall. And not just Jericho, but Nineveh and Babylon, and all of the other lines, and all of the other places, and God is going to move, and God is going to create circumstance, and God is going to bring down those walls. God is going to bring men and women to Christ who never thought that there would be an opportunity for them to come. They never knew who Jesus was, and yet and still, they will come, and they're coming in droves. Let us unify, brothers and sisters. Let us join the fast. Let us move the fast. Let us, let us take the other days so that we can continue the fast, and we can unify, and we can come to God in the in the second second chronicles 7 14 experience where we repent as a people and god turns and heals our land hallelujah for not for us i'm old i've lived more years than i expect to live but for our children and our grandchildren and their children let us pray let us unify let us come before jesus coming before the throne of god crying abba father forgive 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 
Atratara makoro pamana diada. Oh my God. 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 All right. Oh my God. Laura. Laura. I understand about being diabetic. What what I tell people is when we're doing the when we're doing this fast, we put our spoon down at six o'clock and we don't eat for twenty four hours. We only drink water, coffee, and tea, clear liquids. Okay? If you're diabetic, you have to eat or you have to have a regulated uh something in your system. God understands that. Eat the minimum instead of eating a full meal. Eat enough to take whatever medicine, enough to keep your sugar straight and, and, and join us in prayer. I believe that God will receive that. I do that because God's grace is sufficient for us. God's not going to ask you to put yourself in danger. Okay? Um, this fast is food. Okay, Euless. This fast is simply food. If you want to fast something else, and you want to you want to say I'm I'm fasting I'm gonna I'm not gonna whatever and I'm gonna join this fast I think God God will accept that it's fine, but but God is looking for unity in the body. Okay, when God saw it, He said nothing will be restrained from them. They are all in one accord, and we're coming in one accord. We're putting our differences aside. Okay, we're and and, and these these people. That are that, that they're not understanding what is going to happen. I feel the power of God moving. I see the walls of Jericho are shaking. I I feel. I see. I understand the walls of Jericho are shaking. There's going to be a, a few. First thing that's going to happen is a few people are going to come running out of the city, and as they come running out of the city, they're trying to escape the, what's coming. But God is moving. God is moving, and then, then there's going to be more. There's going to be, then they're going to come the hordes. The first ones are going to be the easier to teach because you only have to focus on the ones and the twos, but we're going to have to focus on the hundreds. <laughs> we're going to have to focus on the hundreds and the thousands and the millions, and we're going to have to reach them. How are we going to reach them? God will make a way. People say, well, there ain't no way to do that. That's what they said at the Red Sea. But God will make a way. Well, we can't get there from here. That's what they said at the River Jordan. But when the priest's foot touched the water, the waters backed up, and the children of Israel walked across a flooded river. They walked across on dry ground. Don't tell God what he can't do. God can't lie. Okay? Fine. I won't serve no lying God anyway. Okay? God's word is true. Great revival on the horizon. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Mm. The Lord is moving. The power of God is moving. You see it around you. You see it around you. You see God moving. Open your spiritual eyes. Ask God to open the eyes of faith that you can see what he's doing around you. Oh my God, hallelujah. <clears throat> this guy was saying, well, you know, um, if all this happens, what happens if you don't live through it? So, you know, if I die, I'm with Jesus. If I live, Jesus is with me. I win. You know? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Warning nothing, 1974. See you, buddy. You know, but, but go blaspheme somewhere else. You know, we're about unity. We're about coming together. We're about, we're about ministering the word of God. We're about seeing people win to God. We're about seeing people turn their lives about. We're about seeing people find a place of repentance that they can put the burdens that this life has chained to them, the burden of alcohol addiction, of 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 smoking, of 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 promiscuity, the burdens of of uh, pornography, of sexual addiction, the burdens of 
whatever it is, the foul mouth that some people have got, okay, the the burdens that people have got, we we were working with them. Listen, uh, I've dealt with a lot of people that that you know. Uh, by John. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing. Listen, that, that, that fellow feels like he made a valid point. Okay. I guarantee he thinks that he is, he is the intellectual in the room making a valid point. And, and, and I, I, I dealt with, I dealt with, uh, these people one-on-one and, and this guy was, he was going to school me, you know, and, uh, he's going to tell me why it was that, uh, why it was it? He was going to tell me why it was that he got a great argument that he had, you know, that there was no God. And he comes in, he says, oh, yeah, you know, he starts to, he starts to laying out his argument why there's no God. And he this and that, and he this and that. And I sat there and I was like, yeah. And I told him, I said, you, you, you got a good argument right there. I said, but I got a testimony. And a testimony trumps any argument you've got. A testimony trumps any argument you've got. Is you're telling me what you think. And I'm telling you what I know. You're telling me what you read about. And I'm telling you what I experienced firsthand. Okay? God don't raise people from the dead. Yet here I am. May 1st, 2005. I dropped dead right in church. Boink. It's gone. We had a. We had a good night, LaDonna. God bless you. We're praying for you. Uh, and 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 so I dropped dead, and we had a, uh, a a woman that was a ER nurse. She was a good one. She'd been 25 years, and she said, you didn't have a pulse. Your eyes were rolled back in your head. Your face was staunch and, and, and ashen. There was no blood. You were dead. Okay. Loosen my bodily fluids, et cetera, all that good stuff, right? I was dead. And I went, I don't I didn't go, I didn't get to hear the choir. I didn't see Jesus. I was held in a a void, a black, all I, I, the only color. There was no color, there was no light, there was no nothing. I was in a void. God dealt with my spirit in there. And I, I my wife was able to like I said, I got the I got it written down. Um, I might uh, put it back on Facebook again, so I went back and read it. If you you can follow me on Facebook, uh, if you don't want a friend request me, it's fine. You can follow me on Facebook. You can follow me on YouTube, uh, all over the place. Okay, Laura, we'll pray about that. And and so um, I just I was just dead. I don't remember. It. People say, "Well, what do you remember?" I remember nothing. I was in a void. God was dealing with my spirit. And, and then I heard my pastor say, Clell, can you hear me? And I moved towards him and I was back. And he told me later, he said, he said, I've seen a bunch of dead people and you look worse than most of them. And, uh, okay, we certainly will, Vivian. Um, he said, uh, what's his name, Vivian? And he said, uh, he said, you was dead. He said, you know, your eyes were rolled back and set as you were not breathing. And and Sister Bonnie could not find a uh could not find a, a pulse. And and that's her job is to make sure that if they're working on you in the in the hospital that it's to be working on, you know. Um it's there's a person to be working on still there. And so, um I was dead and God brought me back and I didn't come back and, and, you know, start raising people from the dead and healing people. I have in my ministry, I have prayed for people and they've been healed. All right. But everybody that I prayed for didn't get their healing. I have prayed for people and, and God's healed them. But I've had, I prayed for people that didn't get healed. A very dear sister of mine, she came down, she had cancer. Her, her son, her son died of cancer. 
And, uh, and now he answered to the way he lived. He was, he was a drug addict. Um, he smoked, he drank. He, if it was something bad he could do, he pretty much did it to himself. And, uh, so, you know, when he come to church and in his, in the last stages of his life, he would come to church and we would pray with him and we'd pray for him. And, uh, you know, and, and if he got his healing, he got it on the other side of glory. He got it over there with Jesus. He didn't get it here. And he went on to meet the Lord. And the next year, his mom, I think she was just so broken hearted. She couldn't stand it. She got cancer and she just decided it was just going to kill her. And, uh, you know, she went to be with her son. But, uh, you know, she was a godly woman. And, you know, um, but neither one of them got their healing this side of Jordan. Okay, I prayed for both of them. But then I was in a service where I was in the jail and uh, and um and so um was in the jail and the this guy was sitting over there and he he looked dead. I mean, he honest to goodness I looked at him, I was like, Wow, this guy looks bad. His face was just white, ashy. His his eyes were yellow, milky. If you've ever seen somebody really bad, kind of got liver failure and all that, his eyes were, were milky yellow. His skin was tinted yellow. He was he was nasty looking. And uh, so when we come in there, I was I had my service and I was I was preaching. And right in the middle of my service, the Lord spoke to me and said, Pray for him. And I stopped and I said, I said, sir, I said, can I pray for you? And he said, yeah, you can. And I said, well, I said, can I put my hand on you? He said, all right. And I reached down, and I touched him on the head, and I said, be healed in Jesus' name. That was it. That was all God had. That's all he gave me. I was through. And boom. Okay? And so, um, boom. I, I prayed for him. We're done. Okay, I went on, I preached my message. Didn't see him for a couple, two or three weeks. And when he did come back in, he come walking in with a, a, a jump in his step. I looked and I was like, whoa. And so he comes in and Brother Bo was in there and he would he would do exhortation and stuff and, you know, talk to the people and do exhortation and, you know, kind of stuff. And so he comes out, he's doing his thing. And this guy, he goes, I need to say something. I was like, yes, you do. He said, uh, he said, Brother Eskew, he said, uh, I've, I've been an alcoholic all of my life. He said, when I was eight years old, he said, I can remember stealing daddy's liquor. He said, I'd go get some of his liquor and I'd pour water back in. He said, my daddy was an alcoholic. He never noticed it. If he did notice it, he didn't notice it enough to matter. All right. So he was an alcoholic. He said, I was an alcoholic. He said, uh, I've been homeless for, I don't remember how long he'd been homeless for, but he'd been homeless for a while. He said, I live under a bridge in Atlanta. He said, I got picked up for vagrancy and then they got an old warrant on me. And he said, uh, but I was in here. He said, and the, the, the doctor told me, he said, listen, boy, he said, and I want to say he's 53 or 54 years old. He looked 75 the first time I seen him. Same time he looked about 50. He, looked, he still looked older than he was because he'd lived hard anyways. But his face was flush. And he said, uh, he said, the doctor told me, he said, listen, if you got anybody you love, you better write him a letter because you are dying. Your liver is failing a little more every day. And I don't know what the percentage rate of it is. It says, but at some point, what happens is, is, your your liver just overflows into your kidneys. It shuts your kidneys down, and you're dead within 24 hours. Okay, he said this is what's going to happen to you. It's going to be painful, right? And he said, uh, he said I come in here. He said I just getting out of my cell. He said you prayed for me. He said something happened in me. He said I felt life in me for the first time in a long time. He said and. I went back to the thing and he said, he said, well, the doctor told him, said, look, you need to go over to the infirmary 
and get your test results. These aren't yours. And he said, yes, they are. Those are mine. I just brought them over. He said, no, they're not. He said, I've seen your test results. You are, you you got uh, sclerosis of the liver. He said, these, this is the liver of a 25 year old man, adult, healthy man. And he said, that's mine. And so the doctor was getting mad at him, you know, and he told him, he said, no, he said, he said, brother, ask you pray for me. God heal me. And, and to this doctor's discredit, he said, I don't believe in that. And I was like, wow, you're standing there looking at the guy, you know, you're looking at him. All you're doing is monitoring his slow demise. You didn't do anything. All right. But something happened. He went from, he went from being dead to being grown, right? Yep. That's why they didn't want you to have ivermectin. Um, and so look at that, what you're doing now. And and the doctor just, I don't hear all that. And he come back in there and I want to say, I believe we got to baptize him in Jesus name. I don't, I'm, I can't be sure because we, we baptized a bunch of people, but I like to believe we did. I hope we did. And we never saw him after that. And the, the things that would happen in some of those jail services, these men that have nobody to depend on, they have nobody to, to to believe in, and so they were forced to either depend on God or to quit. Now, God don't heal everybody. I, like I said, I have prayed. I have prayed for a bunch of people that didn't get healed. Okay, not here. They're going to get healed in heaven. We're going to get a new body. Okay, okay, fine. My mother. Died of cancer, you know, and my brother kept saying, well, I believe God's going to heal her. And I said, John, I know she's going to heal her. I know God's going to heal her. I'm not she is. And I know God's going to heal her, but I'm not sure he's going to heal her this side of Jordan. And, and he didn't, you know, she died three months after she found out she had pancreatic cancer, or at least three months after she let us know she, I don't know if she, she knew she had it before or not. My mother was a very private person. She didn't tell nobody her business and she didn't want you prizing around trying to get into it. So I respected that, and, you know, but, um, you know, people say, well, um, how can you, how can you say that? I gotta say God is good. You know, how can you say he ain't? Well, I don't believe there is a God. Um, it's your right. It's America. You got a right to choose your eternal structure. Okay. And, and, and in real, it's smoking or non-smoking. I'm reading your messages, Vivian. Um, I don't have anything to respond to it. You didn't ever tell me what his name is. Um, what else did she write up there? Did I miss something, y'all? Where's she at? I have three messages, W-E. Believe Jesus will heal him. Thank you. I've been answering that all the way through, Vivian. I don't know that God's going to heal him on this side. I know God's going to heal him. Um, yeah. But we get we get the regenerated body on the other side. And and I I had um, this lady that uh, she had a, um, she gotten pregnant. She had been doing drugs when she got pregnant. And the doctor told her that the baby was going to be born with Down syndrome. And uh, and she would come to church and she'd say, I want everybody to pray that God's going to heal me. We're going to heal my baby. And I'm not going to have Down syndrome. And my pastor told her, he said, I'm, I'm not going to pray that. God, if, if listen, if I come to pray for you, if, if the Lord tells me to pray, God's going to heal you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to pray for you. God told me he's going to heal you. But if God didn't tell me that, I'll still pray for you. And I'll agree with you. But I'm not going to tell you that God's going to do something. God hadn't shown me he was going to do it. Okay? So, you know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody. I'm trying to make sure that I stay in the lane that I'm supposed to stay in. If I get out here and I start telling y'all, oh, my goodness, listen, I'm going to pray and you're going to be healed. And then you're not. Then I'm a false prophet. I'm not going to do that. Okay? I'm not going to overstep what God has shown me because I realize God has done some great and wonderful things with through to me 
but he hadn't done everything. You know, there was things that I wanted that didn't happen. That's what I'm saying, Lori. If we, if we always pray God's will, or we should be praying God's will, whatever we pray, Lord, let me win the lottery if it be thy will. So far, it hadn't been God's will that I win the lottery, y'all. But Lord's Lord's moving, and 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 I'm planning on getting me a tractor tomorrow. It's going to be a smoking sweet deal, okay? If I get it, smoking sweet deal. I'll take it. All right. Well, if I'd have won the lottery, I could have got me a brand new tractor. Whoop whoop. Listen, if I got me a lot, if I won the lottery and I won forty million dollars, not only could I get a new tractor, but I could buy somebody to not buy somebody. I could get somebody to drive it all the time. And I can just point my finger over here. That way, do this way. But you know what? I'm content. God's God's been good to me. I'm not sitting here complaining about everything. Ronnie, I do also. He will listen. Okay, we're gonna pray for Ronnie too. And he has. Is it cerebral palsy? She said. Okay. And so, you know, um, there's there's all those things that that people don't don't know and they don't figure. And God's God's moving in everything, but when we pray, God's will be done. Okay. Then understand that it's not God's will that everybody be healed. It's God's will that all men should come to repentance. So, you know, um, this one guy, was he'd he, he come down and he had a demon. And he comes down and he was laughing, you know. Um, let me go back to the one with Down syndrome first. And she come down and, and, and she said, she went she went to the pastor and she said, I want you to pray and God's going to heal heal my, my child in my belly. The doctor said he's going to have Down syndrome. I'm not believing it. I'm not receiving it. Okay, she done been to the uh, Name It, Claim It church. And, uh, you know, and uh, you, 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 you just claim your... Claim you're gonna, you know, go heal, and so the um, my pastor told him, said, "Listen, see, God didn't show me that, and I'm not gonna pray that." He said, "I'm gonna pray with you that God will heal you, and I'm gonna ask that God will heal you, but I'm not gonna tell you that God's gonna heal you." Okay, and then when the baby was born, the baby had Down syndrome, and she never came back to church again. She felt like the ministry did not support her, and I'm like, you know, the ministry supported you perfectly, in in my opinion, the way that I saw it. We had a man come down one time, had a demon. He comes down, he comes to the pastor, and he says, uh, Hey, pastor, you know I got a demon in me. And the pastor said, Uh-huh, yeah. He said, uh, You want to try and uh, cast it out of me? He said, I've been to several churches, and None of them have been able to cast it out. He said, I've, he started naming off the churches that he'd been to, talking about the prominent pastors that had prayed for him to be to be rebuked and cast out. He said, but they, they can't, none of them cast it out. And the pastor looked at him and said, uh, he said, you don't want to cast that demon out, do you? He said, no. He said, there's no sense in me praying over you then. He said, what do you mean? He said, I'm I'm challenging you to cast this demon out. And and Pastor Tom said, he said, you want that demon. He said, you, you're, you, you're welcoming to him. He said, if you decide you want to be free of him, you come back, we'll, we'll deal with him. But if, you, if you were, you're giving him a license to stay, I have no authority to throw him out of some place that he's been welcomed into. You want him, you got him. And you know, he, he was just laughing. He thought that was just funny as I'll get out. <laughs> he can't cast him out either. And I'm like, no. I said, you know, you can't, you, you, you can't, you can't help a person that don't want help. And so, anyway, he he went away and um, took his little, took his little card with him, you know. Didn't go forward. Stop, stop, let's get on. I missed something in there, Larry. I don't know what that is. I must have missed a thread up there or something. Um, but anyhow, um, you know, we, I, I've had people that, that I could not, I couldn't help. Okay. There's a, there's this lady, we went to church for years and years and, uh, 
when she come up, she would come up for years. She would come up and I'll be working the altar and, you know, and I'd work my way down the altar and I'd see her right there and she'd, I'd say, you know, you can pray with you. And she'd say, will you ask the pastor to come pray with me? I said, sure will. And the pastor said, well, that must have made you mad. No. Nope. She wanted the pastor to come pray with her. Okay. And the pastor come pray with her. And and she did or didn't get what she wanted. I don't know. I can't speak to it. I don't know. But uh and it was it was years down the road. And she came to the came to the altar, you know, and, and I was like, I was busy looking for the pastor, because I already you already know. She's going to the pastor pray for her. And uh then a person comes over and go, um, she wants you to pray for her. And I went and prayed for her. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that the the, the walls came down there, but but listen. Thank you, Eulis. But but listen, then when when this happens, when they realize it ain't about the person praying, it's about the God we're touching. It matters. Winston, what are you doing, buddy? You okay? He's over there having a bad dream. Winnie, hup. You okay? I gotta check on my dog, y'all. Come here, buddy. You okay? He was having a bad dream. He was crying. Good boy. Anyways, um, okay. I don't typically call a bunch of people, Eulis. Um, and, and I ain't making no promises because I am I'm booked up. Don't know what I do have to do. And when I do get a break, I don't know what I do with it all the time. And, uh, but, you know, I, Lord willing, I'll give you a call. And so... Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I do. I really do. You don't know how much I do, actually. Um, you know, this, this, that. You can't just, you can't just, you can't just throw your information out over here. Okay, don't do it. You know, don't do it. So, you know, we want to, we want to continue to. Thank you, hate is wrong. Um, forever humble. With listen, we want to continue to take God's word forward. We want to continue to be the best version of ourselves we can be. How are you going to do that? If you, one of the things I, in my counseling situation and scenarios, I, I would try and tell them is, listen, if you can't look at yourself honestly, you're not going to get any better. Okay. Which child? I, 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 I don't recognize your tagline there. But... Eva, I'll check. Did I hit, did I send you out two, or did I send you out two two sets? Oh, abolish Christianity," said Satan. "No," said the Lord. Okay, okay, I do remember that. Okay, how's he doing? How's your son doing? I did. Thank you very much. I surely did, and I appreciate it. My wife and I are humbled that you took the time to send us that. Thank you so much. I did finish it. We prayed over him, and, and he laughed at us. Um, the, the guy, we prayed on him. Okay, thank you. The, uh, the guy with the demon, and he turned around and walked out. And we never saw him again. I don't remember ever seeing him again anyways. Um, he never came back. But so we were in Covington, Georgia. Well, we were in Conyers, and Covington's right next door. And Covington, Georgia has one of the biggest wick covens, as, as far as I know, in the world. Okay. And the wicks are all over the place. And they, we'd go to the we'd go to the to the jail and there was this this girl sitting there, you know, and and uh we'd go in there and, and she's like I'm wick. Don't talk to me. And I'm like, if you don't want to be talked to, we won't talk to you. It's fine. You know? And uh, and she goes, she's over here and she's like, they're afraid. She's talking to her friend. She's like, they're afraid of me. And I'm like, I just, I didn't address her because she said, don't talk to her. I started talking to my friend over here and I said, you know, I said, people that serve Satan believe that the people of God are afraid of them because we're considerate. 
But we're not afraid of a defeated enemy. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And the servants of the devil can do limited things only because he has limited power. But I serve an almighty God, an all-powerful God, an omniscient Father, a, a blessed Son, a saving Spirit in Jesus' name. <laughs> She's over here crying. <laughs> she, she don't want to talk to me no more. Don't want to talk. You got up and left. I, you know, uh, listen, I, when we got, we got out there, I had people come in there and they'd come in there and the, the, the wicks, when they would come in, I'll throw a demon on you. Take off. Enjoy yourself. You heard uh, Deuteronomy 28.7? Let me see if I can help you out here real quick, okay? Deuteronomy 28.7. I don't know that one. Oh, you probably should. Because when you when you um when you think you're fixing to uh you think you're fixing to do something to somebody, you think you're fixing to toss a demon my way. Let me tell you, that would make you my enemy, wouldn't it? I mean, you know, you ain't gonna toss it on me to do me any good. So uh, let me see if I can't find something for you here. Um, the Lord shall call thy, cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Bring it. I got the name. I got the name of Jesus. You're going to come at me directly and you're going to be fleeing in every different direction at once. You won't be able to get away fast enough because the name of Jesus, the truth, the power of the spirit of the Lord God Almighty comes out and boom, all of your plans and all of your, what you think you're going to do and all of your illness and all of your nastiness and all of your filth, when the light hits it, it melts like, like wax in the hot sun, just pfft, and it's gone, and all of a sudden you are revealed for what you are, a sniveling worm, and you have no power, you have no no abilities. And it, it, it tells us in Revelation that in the that, that they're going to see Satan as he is, and the men are going to say, that's the guy we were afraid of? That's what we were, we were all afraid of? That's what we were afraid of? Don't worry about being afraid. Worry about being a conqueror. We're made more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Well, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I can go in the name of the Lord and I am calling on the like-minded believers to call on the name of the Lord and to come against the kingdoms of darkness and we will prevail. We will prevail. We will prevail in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, Almighty, we love you. We praise you. We magnify your holy name and we give you glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Do not fear. Exactly, Angela. 300. It's actually 365, isn't it? Um, but, you know, whew. You know, he's asking about God. And see, the Bible tells me God is a spirit and a color. Color is something that men worry about. As a matter of fact, if you do, and, and trying to get true books about the true history of the United States, okay, the truth, the truth that there were in, in, in Louisiana and Mississippi, that there were some 3,000 slave owners who were black. Oops. Oh, and they had white slaves. Yeah, because they didn't they didn't make a distinction. They were European. They didn't make a distinction. And so they had white slaves and black slaves. Yeah, but we won't talk about that because it doesn't advance an agenda. That's all it really is. I'll leave that alone. Okay. But, uh, you know, it doesn't matter because God doesn't have a color. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. You know, doesn't matter. God doesn't, God, God's not looking at the outside. God's looking at the inside. Okay? 
they're showing their own bigotry when they come at us like that. They're showing their own shortcomings when it comes out like that. Well, look, there's my darling wife. Okay? They're showing their own smallness, their own focused and pinpointed little division of hate that they got going on so that they can continue to try and separate. But we're not worried about separating. We're talking about unity. Okay? Unifying. Unifying. Coming together in Jesus' name, supporting one another. Well, I don't believe exactly like you believe. Yeah, but we've got an enemy, and his name is Satan. We've got a common enemy, and we need to focus on the common enemy. We can, we can have our disagreements, and we can talk about it, but don't make an enemy out of a brother or a sister because they don't believe exactly what you believe. And you make it more more important that they have to believe what you believe exactly like you believe it or they're the enemy. No, they're not the enemy. They're still trying to make it through there. And and I, I preach what I preach and I believe what I believe. But I respect the fact that you may not, you we may not understand everything that you understand. You may not understand what I understand, but we're in a common desire to find and fulfill our role in the kingdom of God. And therefore we have one enemy. His name is Satan. And we're focusing on fighting our brothers so that we don't fight the enemy. And Satan has done that so many times. Okay? So many times and so effectively. And men have allowed it to happen too many times. Let's don't. Let's don't. Let's turn this thing around. Okay? Let's turn it around. I want to pray for Ronnie right now in Jesus' name. He said he's got a lot of medical issues. He's got cerebral palsy. About 50 years old. He's, and, and his mama, he's got a mama that's praying. In Jesus' name, we'll pray for Vivian. Right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, we're asking you to touch Ronnie. God, move on him. Father, we 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 will we'll hope you'll you'll heal him. We hope you do. We hope you will. We trust you, God. We trust you with your will. We trust you, Lord Jesus, to bend it. We ask you, Father, to minister heart, soul, and mind to the praying mother, Vivi. Lord, she she's she loves her boy. And God, right now in Jesus' name, we know, Lord. We don't know firsthand, but we know. We're asking in Jesus' name, Lord, to be with that family. We're, we're asking for healing for Ronnie. We're asking and believing in Jesus' name. We're trusting you, Lord. We ask you, Father, to minister to him, to spread your love thickly over that family, to touch where you will. Lord, also, we ask you to touch Lisa and Eva, Ron Garrett and Heather. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray, we trust, we believe. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah. Father, move on us, Lord. Touch us in Jesus' name. Heal us in Jesus' name. Guide us and direct us in Jesus' name. Let us be the people we need to be in this hour, the hour we've been chosen to be here. <clears throat> let us oppose the evil and let us unify in Jesus' name. Let us unify in the structure you've given us. Let us be obedient to your word. Let us be strong and may us be determined in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, Renee. Amen. Amen. I my dad never taught me how to how to give up. My dad never taught me how to to lose. He said, There's things in life, you're gonna play games, you'll lose some. Now I teach you how to lose. He did show me how to lose with dignity, okay? 
You did your best. The other team was better. There's no shame. Okay? You did your best. The other team was better. It happens. Okay? But on those days, what you try to do is you make, you get ready so that the next day, your best can be a little better. Okay? You can improve you. You can improve them. Okay? Give them a stronger opponent. Give them a better opponent. That's what you do. That girl's up there flying all around. I hope she don't fall on me and sting me again. I get stung regular, but that's okay. Hallelujah, I steal their honey, and they know it. But that's where I'm at. What time is it? Anybody got time? Yes, Vivian, by all means, keep us keep us posted on, on what happens there. Lori, you're a blessing. You know, 12.32. Wow, I was supposed to have been asleep. I knew something was going on. I got to get up in the morning and go look at that tracker. So let's take in uh, right now in Jesus' name. Let's just go ahead. I want to we'll pray. Let's just go ahead and we'll pray out of here. Um, I covered everything I thought I needed to cover. Wow. Yeah, God knows exactly what you said. That's called um, that's called um, edification of the body. It's a uh, it's covered in in First Corinthians fourteen. And uh, there's there's three different kinds of tongues in the Bible: edification of the body, receiving of the Holy Ghost, and tongues of interpretation. There's also a gift of tongues. It's different in two, but yes, God knows what you you were you were you were displaying the Holy Ghost. That's your evidence that God has baptized you with his spirit. It's for you. When the devil comes and says, you didn't get anything, you say, uh, oh, no, I, I, I remember speaking in tongues. I heard it. Hallelujah. Something different. Something that Satan would, would steal from you. Okay? Satan would steal from you. But we're not going to let him steal it. We're going to keep it. We're going to hold it close. Hallelujah. Yeah, he does. God knows your heart, Renee, every time. God always knows your heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover off this. Uh, if anybody wants a prayer cloth, all you have to do is message me your mailing address. We take a, a drop of oil, we put it on the, the cloth, and we mail it to people and uh, just to help them to, to pray. If you don't like to use the messaging system here, get your take a take a uh, screenshot of my email r c e s k e w at yahoo dot com and and God will you know bring us all together again tomorrow night and we're going to uh, Lord willing um, I'll be able to tell you all about my new tractor I hope um, Kenneth it's, it's good having you on here again tonight man I appreciate it and, and I got your your address straightened out your cloth will be in the mail in the morning, okay? I held it back because I was like, man, I carried mail for 30 years. And anymore, uh, when when I was carrying, if, if I got a piece of mail for you, I knew where you lived. If it was close, I got it to you. And today, they don't do that no more. They they have machines that, that pull anything out, and they're looking for it to not be right, okay? There's not a, a perfecting in there. I was expected to deliver the mail, and today's postal service has gone truly liberal. And if you haven't got it exactly correct, then um, they'll they'll send it back. So um, I, I, it'll be in the mail in the morning. And Ulysses, uh, if you requested them, if, um, I don't know if I got your, I think I got your in the mail the other day, but I had to look. And so... Let's go ahead and pray, and, and I want to pray on out of here tonight. Lord, in Jesus' name, as we come to you in faith, believe and trust in you, God, lifting you up, magnifying you, the one true God, the everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. God, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We ask you, Father, forgive us any sin or trespass we've got. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us away from the tempter. Help us, God, to be the overcomers we need to be in this hour, forgiving us, leading us, and guiding us. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We ask you 
in Jesus' name to help us and to heal us, to lead us and to guide us in your way, your truth, your righteousness for your name and your name's sake. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. I want to pray a special prayer for Ronnie, Vivian, Eva, Larry, Sarah, Kate, Angela, Karen, all in Jesus' name, Lord, and that you list, that you, Lord Jesus, would do and perform special things for Vivian, special things in Jesus' name. And God, for this, we give you praise and glory and honor, and we lift you up above all, in all, and through all, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, everybody, I'm about wore out now. Uh, when the anointing lifts, I'll be totally fried. In the meantime, I love every one of you. I pray for you, and we're trusting God, trusting the Lord with all thine heart. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, this we added to you. In the meantime, I'm going to go in here and hit the hay. <laughs> y'all have, have a great day. God bless you. And, uh, you know, send me the messages. Larry, send me that message again. Thank you very much, Lori. Send me that message again on that uh, that guy on the on the YouTube. I can't. I haven't got a chance to go and watch that yet. That's an hour and a half, I think, or something like that. And I ain't had a whole hour and a half that I was awake. So thank you very much. God bless each and every one of you. Tomorrow night, 10 o'clock, same time. Good night.